The Orioles put on their orange jerseys for the first time on the road yesterday. Think you'll see him again? Hardy's going to wear it. He got his first home run. The Orioles would hit four. Jones had one in the first inning. Cruz, Pierce, both with dingers. Love those jerseys. Now the Orioles look for a series win before they head back home. in a row is on this Sunday in New York the Orioles fans come into Yankee Stadium to see if the Orioles can come away with a 2 1 series win before they head back home for the White Sox tomorrow. Hi everybody I'm Gary Thorne and welcome for the Orioles obviously these games against the East are big they're trying to take second place the Yankees are there right now but only a game ahead of the Orioles the Orioles are making up ground this month because of the home runs they had four yesterday. They had four in Pittsburgh. As Warner said, let's go to the videotape. In Pittsburgh, it was Chris Davis. Davis had a tremendous day at PNC Park. He would deliver his fourth home run early in the ball game. Cruz would pick up his 13th back to back. Davis would then add his fifth. Not done yet. Davis would add his sixth. A three homer day in Pittsburgh for Davis, four for the Orioles overall. We moved to Yankee Stadium in the ball game yesterday. In the first inning, the Orioles kicked it off. Jones, his 13th home run of the season. He now has seven in the month of June. Cruz delivered his 23rd, battling for the home run lead in Major League Baseball. And one of the hottest hitters for the Orioles, Steve Pierce. Pierce would deliver his sixth, his second in June, and perhaps most importantly for the Orioles, Hardy, number one. And he would come to the dugout with nobody talking to him or recognizing him. Throw, he threw the sunflower seeds on his own head to celebrate. <laughs> That's what happens when you get your first home run. So all the runs yesterday via the home run. The Orioles 1.47 per game now. They've had 10 multi-homer games in June. Both of the most in the majors. Nelson Cruz 23 home runs tied for most. 508 home runs since 2012. Most in the majors. The Orioles are getting it done with the long ball. Jim Palmer doing it against the Yankees are supposed to have the Thunder but right now it's the O's. Yeah and they also have to do it against Tanaka. I mean you know they had 11 multi hit home run games last year. They did hit 212 home runs which was 25 better home runs better than any other American League team. So they're getting back to that. They lose Weeders because of the elbow problems but they get Cruz with 23. Pretty much for the Orioles they don't see a lot of bases only 19. Uh, Ellsbury's got more 21 than the entire Oriole team, so they better hit some home runs. The big question is this will be the second time they have seen Tanaka. He's 11 and 1. The Yankees, not only does he play well, but they won 12 out of the 14 games. And I think the other thing is uh, I got a text from my former teammate, broadcaster for the Yankees, who's in Maui, uh, couldn't be here this weekend. This makes the uh, the big uh, homecoming here with, you know, with the uh, the old timers game. And he said, you better get to Tanaka before he gets to two strike. When he gets to two strikes, the league is hitting 121. Orioles will try and do it. Second time they have faced him on the other side of it. Chris Tillman, which Chris Tillman will we see some very strange numbers for Chris Tillman this season? Yeah. And, you know, the problem is uh, Ben McDonald's doing radio for us, you know, former number one draft choice for the Orioles. And he said, hey, look how bad he is in the first two innings. He's given up 31 runs. 16 and 15 runs so it's uh, he's never pitched well against the Yankees uh, he just you know this year has been kind of uh, one of those years where he's 5 and 0 oh on the road but his ERA is over 6 runs a game Tanaka on the other hand 5 and 0 oh here his ERA, uh, you know, again, he leads the American League with a 199 ERA. So I think Buck Showalter said it very well. He said, I can tell you one thing that has to have happened today. Tillman has to pitch well. And that means he's got to throw some strikes and attack the zone. Will he do it? Well, we're going to find out. It's the Orioles and the Yankees for the Orioles a chance to take two out of three here in New York. First pitch coming up.
Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And what has been a fantastic weather weekend. It continues here in New York for the Sunday game. And as the Yankees take the field, take a look at our train game time temperature at 76 degrees. Few high clouds around, a lot of sunshine, though, and that humidity down. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train really hard. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Orioles today. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Marquegas, Pearson, Jones, Cruz, Davis, and Hardy. Machado, Scope, and Joseph. J.J. Hardy with that first home run of the season yesterday as we talked about the long ball. That's what the Orioles are riding the W's. Let's go take a look at uh, uh, Tanaka who comes in uh, red hot. Uh, you can see the mix. You know, the, the slider, the 25 percent is uh, that's his breaking ball. I mean, he does have a change up, it does, has a curveball, doesn't throw very much fastballs almost about half the time. And the change up is the splitter. And that's the pitch uh, when he gets in trouble, uh, which is not that often. Uh, that's what he uses. Two strikes, two outs, throws it over 50 percent of the time. Look at that. So he's 11 and one low ERA, 113 strikeouts. Uh, this will be his 15th start and he's already struck out. Uh, what 10 or more five of those times so throws a lot of strikes uh, watch the pitch what the week before last he can command his fastball to get to where he can use his slider and his splitter about as well as anything and again Mr. Consistency at least six innings under three runs for all 14 starts really gives the and what starting pitch is supposed to be really gives him a chance to win every time he goes out there. He faced the Orioles in his second start back on April 9, non decisioned in the ball game. And as far as the NDs are concerned, he's only had two of those one against the Orioles, one against the Angels. He went seven innings against the Orioles, three runs on seven hits, gave up a Jones home run. He walked only one, and he struck out 10 in that ball game. He has won his last five decisions uh, for the Yankees on the season. So the Orioles will go after him in hopes of coming away with a series win here and it is the end of their road trip three and two. You talk about some additions to teams. How about these two for the Orioles Nelson Cruz and then the other side Tanaka. How much have they meant to their respective ball clubs. Well the Orioles would be nowhere near the record they have if it weren't for Cruz. With a 28% of homers, 20% of RBIs, and 18% of the extra base hits. And for the Yankees, the rest of their starters nowhere near what Tanaka's done. 38% of the wins, 23% of the innings pitched, and 31% of the strikes. Yeah, the other starters are 18 and 21. So obviously he sets the table. And you can see everybody kind of perched uh, up over the railing because you can watch all the film. Still, and you know they have a little bit of an idea, but the weather today here in June on the 22nd a lot different than it was in April. So Tanaka is ready to go, and so are the Orioles. Nick Marquez will stand in, and he will take the pitch outside for a ball. Nick has had a one for nine here on the first two games of this series. Still up at that 294 average, 28 RBIs. Outfield playing him straight away, and so is the infield. And Nick will go to left, and he's got a base hit. It is really phenomenal. Another <laughs> hit in his first at bat in a ball game. He's hitting over 394 now in first at bats in the first inning. Yeah, he took an over yesterday. He was uh, even higher than that at 400. So again, he sets the tone, and well, you want to get up for the big boys. And he just takes a little bit of a slider. It kind of works to a lot of hitters, but Nick is such a good breaking ball hitter that it kind of goes right to the bat head, and then he's he's very adept at using the whole field. It just spanks it into left for a leadoff single. That's why they don't shift on him anymore yeah. because he's been doing so much of that. So Tanaka will work out of the stretch here as Pierce will stand in one of the hottest for the Orioles Steve Pierce pitch will be taken outside he's got a four game hit streak coming in 
over the last 11 hitting 421 with seven multi hit games. And uh, in this series he's gone four for nine with a homer and four RBIs. Tanaga's delivery to him and the fastball will be taken inside. But Showalter talking about Tanaka before the game today was talking about that splitter and how effective it is. Jim mentioned you get behind you're in trouble and Buck said you cannot hit hit the fastball if you are sitting yeah. on the splitter. You yeah. can't do it. Yeah, what you hope is you hit off the fastball which is anywhere from 91 to 94 and hope he gets a splitter up in the zone or hangs a slider. If you go back to the first game Gary the three runs was on a scope three run shot and it was a hanging slider. I mean waffled it down the left field line. Yep. I mean, now you're getting into the counts already. He didn't have the kind of command. The game that I saw was the one up in Seattle. Boy, he could pepper the corners with the best of them. 3 0 count. Pierce will have to take one here. Well, I don't know. He might he have does. been swinging yeah. there for a strike. Yeah, I would imagine that Tanaka, Masahiro Tanaka, would have, if he paid attention, which I'm sure he did on Friday night, he saw Kuroda, similar pitcher, older. He's 25. Uh, Kuroda now, what, at 39, I think. But they're similar because they have the same kind of pitch repertoire, and the slider that uh, that got Pierce out a couple of times. He will foul that one off, and the count will go full. Some of the numbers on Tadakos, which we have mentioned, he is a ground ball pitcher. Forty-eight percent of the balls off opponents' bats are ground balls. Forty-eight. When the bases are empty. Two thirty-seven runners on. Only one seventy-seven. The opponent batting average. With runners in scoring position, it drops all the way down to 154. Three ball, two strike count. Marquecas on at first base. And a runner goes, and it is foul back. So Nick was taken off as Buck Showalter is going to try and create some runs here early. Yeah, I think you have to do that. And not to, and Nick's stolen three out of five attempts. But again, you have to throw a strike or it's a ball four. And that's a little slider that stays up. So Pierce is able to foul it off. But it's a good running situation unless he hits a line drive at somebody and that's going to be a double play. But you stay out of the double play and as we told you when you have a 199 ERA runs are hard to come by. And as we said a pronounced ground ball pitcher runner not going ground ball to the hole and that's going to be a base hit. So the Orioles open it up here in the first inning with two singles to left field. I think Mark Kegas will go down to second base. Steve Pierce has got a five game hit streak. And the bat continues to just sizzle. Well, he's five for ten now in this series, as you mentioned. Came in four for nine, hit the double uh, that gave the Orioles the lead, at least initially on Friday night. And then the two-run home run yesterday, and then another single to the center field. So the Orioles get the first chance here with the runner in scoring position. It will go to Adam Jones. Adam hitting 314 in these situations on the year, even better than that. 291 overall average, and uh, he's had a home run and a couple of RBIs in this series. So Adam Jones with nobody out, the Orioles yesterday 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. They're 4 for 17 in the series, and the pitch will be outside for a ball. He has started all three hitters off with ball one. Not that that makes a great difference in what you do against him, at least on the year, but kind of interesting. Well, they're all hitting off the fastball, as you mentioned. Uh, Buck talked about that. I'm sure Jim Bresley said the same thing. So right here, you know, he's going to hit off the fastball. If he hangs a breaking ball, he'll speed the bat up a little bit. He's yeah. looking for a ground ball for two. And yeah. the pitch will be away, and it's one on one. But I think that's the one thing. If you've watched him pitch, and you know the Orioles certainly know that from the April thing, is that there are no fastball counts. We saw that from Corota the other night. You know, you throw a splitter, you throw a slider, you know, two and one, three and oh, three and one, all the good hitters counts, they just weren't those type of counts against guys that know how to pitch. One one. Mark Agus, the lead runner at second, jumps off. That's gonna be a broken bat left field, playing deep, but time to get in is Gardner. And Jones retired. Now take a look at the Yankee defense. Uh, 41 errors on the year. The Orioles with 38. Gardner, Ellsbury, Suzuki, very mobile, good throwing outfield. Johnson, uh, Ellie Johnson, who came over from Tampa. Jeter, Solarte. We saw him at third base uh, on Friday night. Now all of a sudden he's over at second to share the Gold Glover, and then Brian McCann, who pinch hit yesterday, but other than that had the afternoon off. Couple of hits on Friday night though. Well, here's Nelson Cruz. Here's the matchup of two of the best acquisitions. In baseball for two teams for the year Tanaka against Cruz Cruz went 0 for 3 against him in the 
first start Tanaka had against the Orioles. Hitting 300 with runners in scoring position right now and a swing and a miss on that pitch down. Yeah, he hadn't even thrown a split fingered fastball yet and you know, there are the total bases and Carnacion who started out slow. Friday night had a couple of uh, three run home runs. And then the rest of the, the group pretty heady group. Mm. Oh one count. Tanaka the look back. Solarde holding the runner Marquecas. Cruz will take it it's down low. Cruz is putting up not just incredible numbers but on the road even more incredible through the first 40 games with the ball club since 1920. Right now Cruz on the road with 46 RBIs is fourth best all time in the first 40 games of the year on the road in RBIs and then 16 of his 23 home runs. Oh. When he's got the uh, the grays or the orange on. Swing and a miss. Same pitch he went after the first time, and it goes to one and two. So that tells me, and we saw Corota do this against some of the power hitters, is that not only is it a slider, it's a good one. A good slider, you don't pick the spin up. And uh, how did he get Adam Jones out? He started him off with sliders, a couple, and then went in. I don't know if he'll do that to Cruz, but certainly has that option because his command's that good. Cruz, three home runs this month. Part of the 28 the Orioles have hit, leading the majors. One two delivery to him and he'll foul it off and that got McCann that came right back on McCann and he will put the head down after that one got him. Yeah this is a split fingered fastball and it stays up and then he hits it right off the kneecap. Mm. A pretty good pitch to hit so Nelson stays alive and then. That hurt yeah. that hurt up here. Tie about fourth best in RBIs on the road. The others are Joe DiMaggio, Vern Stevens, and L. Simmons. You got to go back to 1948. Well, we know DiMaggio and Simmons are in the Hall of Fame. Is Vern Stevens? I don't, I don't think, think so. so either. But one, two delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled off. Yeah, there's a good splitter, and it's a hard one. So the Orioles forcing Tanaka here in the four, first inning to throw 17 pitchers to get one out. You got to like that, because boy, the Orioles would love. To get that pitch count up on him, which is so hard to do. First pitcher, last hundred years with a hundred plus strikeouts and a sub two ERA in his first 14 starts. He leads everybody in ERA at 199. Mike Agus, the look back. Here's the one two. Cruz didn't go, yeah. I don't think. Yes, he did. Oh. Chris Guccione makes the call at first base, and Nelson really upset. Yeah, you, you can't challenge those, but it's a not a very. I don't think that's a good call. I don't think he got that right at all. You know, this is the third slider he's seen in this sequence. You take a look, and this is what Chris is looking at, and he didn't even no. come close to swinging. That's a tough call. Yep. That one uh, held up on. So now the Orioles with two down will rely on Chris Davis. Yeah, you try to rely on the, your ability to maybe uh, discern a ball from a strike, and you do, and then the umpire doesn't go along with you. And it's yeah. in a game like this. Well, those are yeah. I mean, I just, this this guy's good, really good. You 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 need the, some of the breaks to go your way. So Chris Davis, two on. Pitch to him will be taken down low for a ball. Tom Woodring, one of the new umpires, has the plate in this game. Lucioni's at first, Eric Cooper's at second, Tom Hagen, the crew chief, is at third base. This would be a big mental lift for Tanaka and the Yankees if they can get out of this inning without allowing a run after the first two were put on base. Another start of a 1 0 and a swing and a miss as he throttles back on him 1 and 1. Well, they're only hitting 154 with runners in scoring position, so we saw a couple splitters and now the first two pitches to Chris Davis. Uh, balls in the second one really plummets. Hard to get anything but the top of the ball. Chris is 304 average with runners in scoring position way above that 220 overall average. The shift is on against him in the infield. Tanaka, here's the 1 1 delivery on the way, and Davis will swing and miss on the outside corner pitch. 1 and 2. Well, the amazing thing for him, and you get a couple of guys on, Jonesy with 13 home runs, Cruz with 23, and Davis right behind him, and they all. Are hitting 300 or better with runners in scoring position and a chance to get out of this inning. Davis had a one for three against Tanaka in the first series. Here's the one-two delivery. Chris will take it. It's down low. Can with a nice stop. When you're on base with Tanaka using that splitter, 
You really got to stay alive. He has four wild pitches. He has hit three batters. So you may get a chance if you're on to pick up an extra base on a pitch like that that gets away. Two ball, two strike out. Orioles trying to get the early lead here on this 11 game winner. Most wins, fourth in strikeouts, fourth fewest walks, and the number one ERA, all numbers held by Tanaka. 2 2 delivered to Davis and a swing and a miss. So Tanaka works out of it. No runs despite back to back singles to start the inning. Tillman to the mound. First inning, here's the starting lineup for the Yankees today. It'll be Gardner, Cheater, and Ellsbury, Teixeira, McCann, and Beltron. Johnson, Salarte, and Ichiro. Teixeira's got a 10 game hit streak coming in. Let's go take a look at Chris Tillman's numbers. Fastball is uh, yeah, just about 50 50 with the other step. Breaking ball is pretty much uh, the, the big curve ball, and he does have a little bit of a slider cutter, and then the change up at 13%. The big thing for him is obviously the, again the the early runs. There are the numbers, five and zero on the road, but uh, an ERA of over almost six and a half runs a game. Pitches much better at Camden Yards, and again the numbers by lefties last year uh, down in the uh, 240 range against left-handers. This year over 300, We're getting a, doing a better job against righties. But you cannot against Tanaka, and we've seen that uh, have that first inning where he's given up what 15 and then 14 in the second, so 29 runs. In his first two innings out of the 47, he's given up all year. Just the craziest number is that he's got the fourth highest road ERA and the best record on the road in baseball. Figure that one out. Here's Gardner. He'll take the first pitch, and that will be inside for a ball. Gardner has a four for 15. Lifetime against Tillman. These Yankee hitters have seen a lot of Tillman. In the starts he's made, Chris has got a four and four record against the Yankees overall. Part of that road march for him, he's the first pitcher in a hundred years to have an ERA six or higher and no losses in his first nine road starts. It's just unfathomable. Two well, they, old count. Well, they get him more runs than he's given up, and that's how he's done it. And right there, I don't know where that pitch was, but I mean, if you don't get that one, it's going to be a long afternoon. That ball started in the middle and went to the inside corner. And they do have some speed. Gardner with 15 stolen bases. Lead delivery by Tillman, and that will be in there for a strike. Gardner, Jeter, and Ellsbury for the Yankees against the Orioles' 26 year old right hander who retires 70% of leadoff batters. The lefties have killed him this year, 305. 3 1 delivery, and that's going to go down the line. That'll be a base hit. Into the corner, Marquez. Gardner on his way to second base, thinking about three. He's going to try for three. Here's a relay throw to third. And in time, a triple. Machado arguing that he came off the bag on the slide and that he tagged him. 
While you're agreeing with him is Tom Allen. Well, you may get a challenge here. After that call on Cruz, it won't take much to get Buck out there. Obviously, uh, so again, three and one, you got to throw him a strike. Gardner, well, he knows what's coming, and then it's all about can I outrace our kick is to the ball and the relay. You saw the immediate reaction of Machado with that second tag saying he was off. Yeah, but was the, said no. Was the glove still on his body? Now he tags him here. Does he take it off when the hand's off? Then I don't know. Can't really see from that angle. This will probably give you a better one. This will be so that he beats the throw. Does he stay on the bag? Tagging him up the leg, up the leg, up the leg. Very and, close. Oh, he's out. I believe they could call him out. So we'll see. And Buck still out there talking to Hallion, waiting for his video replay man to tell him yes or no on a challenge. Looks like the answer is no. No, he's got a challenge. Well, nothing to lose on this one, really. Uh, why save it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's you know, obviously you, 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 Tanaka doesn't give up any runs. Lead off triple. You're going to. You're not going to uh, play your infield in, or you're, you're not allowing them to have a big inning here in the first. So I don't just know if I saw anything that you could overturn that with. That's the issue. I mean, as the lawyers love to say, it's the burden of proof. It's the big rule. It's got to be clear that the call on the field was wrong in order to overturn it. Is there a video replay that's yeah, clearly so you can, shows? Now you can see and watch him. He'll keep the tag, 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 tag. The glove comes off. The hand comes off. Does he tag him before the hand gets on? And I, that, while that may have happened from that angle, I don't know if you can overturn that uh, somewhere here in the New York City. I don't either. Yeah. So they're downtown uh, here, looking at it at the. Uh, Review headquarters, right, right there. But is he is the glove really on the hand, and uh, did he get it back? This is going to be a long one because it is so close. They're going to look at every review available. Well, it's a heads-up play by Manny because the first scope makes a great relay throw because he's got a strong arm. But you just don't know. We see it at second base a lot of times. The glove comes up and the runner does go off the bag as he does. But did he get on? And did he get back in time? Yeah, no question that his hand came off the bag. It's just a question whether the glove was also still on him yeah. when he did so. So, challenge underway. Tillman, meanwhile, will take warm ups while this is going on. The infielders will gather together and chat. The outfielders will join in a group, have a bit of coffee, perhaps a scone, a little brunch out there in center while we await. <laughs> Speaking about out. coffee and scones, yeah. I got up really early this morning yeah. and I went over to 78th in Lexington, yeah. about two blocks from our hotel to uh -huh. go to Starbucks. And one of their workers was in front. I said, What time do you owe me? He said, Six. I said, Well, why are you standing outside? He said, Well, nobody showed up. Really? <laughs> now, that's it, a first for a Starbucks. Starbucks. That's incredible. 70. Howard Schultz, <laughs> are you listening? 78th and Lexington. Nobody. I, must, I said it's not even a holiday well, weekend. You should have been just jumping for joy. You didn't <laughs> no. have to stand in line or anything. Well, I understand that, but here's the deal: if you're going to get people to become addicted, you got to feed the addiction. <laughs> <laughs> this may be the longest review we have had, yeah. as they look at every replay available to them. And in New York, that's a lot of them. Well, they'll also get yeah. They, He's yeah, out. Yeah. How about that? Yep. So, so the challenge of Buck Showalter works, and the ruling is he is out. What triple? Yeah. How about the relay, oh. as Jim said, from Jonathan Scope? Well, you know, it starts with Marquez because he knows who's running. He's a gold glover, and then uh, the throw and Jonathan Scope. I mean, this is why they don't put Machado out there when they do the shifts because he can really fire the. Uh, well, it used to be the horse hide. Now it's the cow hide. But he—I mean—he made a perfect relay throw, and then Manny made a great tag. What a big play early on in the game. So here's Jeter, and the bases are empty as the Orioles win on the challenge. So that's a—is that a double and a yes? Put out trying to extend. Oh, one count on Jeter. Jeter with the 271 average, and uh, will take the pitch. Eric Jeter had an 0 for 4 in the ball game yesterday, uh, rather the first game, ending a hit streak that he had. Ended up with a 1 for 4 in the ball game yesterday. Now how about those numbers? 6 for 13 lifetime. Yep. Yeah, that's the one thing I see from Chris. I mean, the velocity. Uh, you know, they they moved him over on the pitching rubber a little bit, and 
today it doesn't look like he's way over, but a little bit more to the middle to make him use his legs a little bit because the velocity is kind of back to where he was three, four years ago where it fluctuates early. He may hit 91, but it's 87. Last year, much more consistent. The only game that I can remember he really had a great fastball was opening day. 90 hit 95 against the Red Sox opening day in Camden Yards. 3 1 delivery on the way, Jeter. This has not been a friendly ballpark for Chris Tillman. Here at Yankee Stadium, he is 2 and 3 lifetime and six starts. His ERA is 9.6. He has given up five home runs here, and the Yankees have hit 404 against him in ball games played here in New York. He's given up 46 hits in 24 innings. Jeter will go to second base. Good jam shot right there. Scope is up. Makes the play over to Davis, and there are two down. In my opinion, and I'd like to think it's also his, is that those are numbers from the past. I mean, to me, he's a much different pitcher. Well, a lot they better of be. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I'm with you there. And, um, and the reason I say that is because I'm not that he hasn't lapsed back to where he was before 2012 on occasions this year, because he has. I mean, if you look at Chris Tillman, he has a couple of games where he hasn't even, I mean, he's given up five runs more in the first inning. But he's had, uh, let's see, seven, eight, six, and five. Four games with that kind of runs, and he never had that last year. Yeah. Infield will shift a bit on Ellsbury, who shows bunt. Machado was playing in and charged, and the pitch is taken for a ball. Yeah, he does another look in. Ellsbury with a one for three in the ball game yesterday, a couple of hits in seven at bats in the series with a four game hit streak. And a swing and a miss as Tillman's got a yeah. chance to get out of this first inning. Well, there's the power change up in for me on, on his way to 16 wins last year. That was the difference. One ball, one strike out on Ellsbury. Ellsbury six for 21 with a homer lifetime off Tillman. And he was going for another one. The full cut foul tipped into the mitt and a one ball, two strike count. So other than getting behind Gardner, you're seeing. A little bit of 2013 Chris Tillman better velocity better change up. And once he gets those two pitches going he can incorporate the curveball even on his best days throws it a little under 50% of the time. Ellsbury will foul that one back and the count one ball two strikes stays. With Chris Tillman Tillman has a win. A couple of losses and a no decision in his last five starts. It is his first outing. Against the. Yankees this season. 11th career start against the Yankees with that 4 and 4 mark and an ERA of 6.7. And again fouled off. That's a 9 iron over yeah. in front of the Yankee dugout. Well, that's the only the way you hit his downer because uh, the last year and a half going back to last year and when he came up at right around the All-Star game in 2012, he's had about as good a curveball as there is in baseball. Ellsbury hanging in on the one two. Tillman's delivery to him and that will be taken. It bounced off the plate. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. Ellsbury carrying a big year against the Orioles into this ball game hitting 368 against the Orioles this season with one RBI picked up. The Orioles lead the season series three games to two. Boy that's. Close. We don't have a reading on Woodring, a young umpire, but it looks like that strike zone is going to favor the hitters. Well, you take a look, and it's a little, probably a little low. I mean, when any time you know, Caleb Joseph did a nice job, but kind of so low, he snatched it up. Three-two delivery on the way, and he walked it. I just like the velocity. And he obviously, you know, with a guy that's got what 22 steals, you don't want to walk him. Or 21, with only been caught twice, 13 in a row, but. I just like the fact that we're seeing Chris Tillman actually throw the ball with a much more velocity than in a lot of his other starts. So Tillman now with the runner on, he's given up the double to Gardner, the walk to Ellsbury, but he's got two down. And he gets marked to Shera. Shera's got the 10 game hit streak going, their hottest hitter in the lineup at the moment. And the fastball is going to be inside for a ball to Shera. Has gone uh, with a 297 average during the hit streak, two home runs, eight RBIs over the last 10 games, raising that average up to 250 on the on the year. Shift on against him, and the pitch of fastball that's in there for a strike. 
Well, they got the uh, the, the RBI off of Jimenez on Friday, the first run the Yankees scored, and the only run until they got into the ninth inning where they scored four, and then he hit the home run, which was about what do you think, shoulder high mm. off of Bud Norris yesterday, on a two strike count, got on top of it somehow. That'll be fouled off outside of first base. So Tillman again is going to get ahead on the count here. One ball and two strikes. Orioles head back home with the White Sox coming in and they hope to go back with their 39th win of the season. They're trying to with a victory today. Get that record evened up against the Yankees that have identical marks if the Orioles can win it. To share a list one to right Marquecas has it lined up. Nick is there and he puts it away. So no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. The big play of the ball game maybe was right here in the first as Nick Marquez the scope to Machado got Gardner trying to go for a triple. From Centerville, you've won 500 for being selected. 500 more for every Orioles home run hit today. Play the Orioles scratch off from the Maryland Lottery for your chance to be a contestant of the game. Win a trip to see the O's play at Wrigley or to the MLB World Series. Learn more at mdlottery.com slash Orioles. Big day for our Maryland Lottery contestant yesterday with the four home runs. And a goodly number of Oriole fans have spent the weekend here in the city watching some baseball. Yeah, it looks, seems like there was a little bit more orange yesterday. And today and that's because it was Syracuse Day. Seriously. Oh really? Yeah. Well that's what they were. So the orange was there was both Oriole Orange okay. and Syracuse, Syracuse orange, orange here yesterday. Not that I don't see orange, but yeah. kind of like hunting season, especially yesterday. <laughs> here JJ Hardy, he went hunting and found a home oh. run. He got his first of the year yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's had a, a three for eight in the series with a homer and an RBI, part of the four home run output the Orioles had in the game. Hardy will go to short with this one. Jeter was playing deep, and Hardy is retired. One down here in the second inning. I like the way uh, Adam Jones described uh, getting off the snide as far as hitting home runs. You should get rid of the donut. It's a zero. <laughs> it's a zero. <laughs> Take that donut off your bat. And it was, it, with one out. it wasn't like it was a hanging slider. I mean, it was a 95 mile per hour fastball up and in. In a line drive into the seats. We got a real powerful cut. I mean, that's what we had noted earlier in the game. JJ had said, you know, my back bothered me. My swing wasn't there. I went to a single swing. Now my back's fine. And I'm trying to find a way to drive yeah. the ball again. And that's exactly what he did in that at bat. Manny Machado, uh, Machado did not face Tanaka in that first series. He's had a one for eight in this one. Jonathan Scope waiting on deck. And the pitch will be taken inside. Yeah, one those, ball, one strike. Yeah, I think those are the change-ups, uh, so they'll be a little bit harder than the splitter, and they won't drop as much. For a big guy, and Brian McCann is—that's uh, what he is. He moves pretty well for a catcher. One-one delivery on the way is outside. For Tanaka here at home, five and zero, oh, one point eight six ERA. Believe it or not, that's only the third best home ERA in the American League. 
hitters hitting 200 against him in games pitched here. And a swing and a miss. Had him off balance on that one. Yeah, you think they're getting a fastball and a 2 1 count, two balls, one strike, and he throws a good slider. And it's not only it's a slider, but look where it ends up. And the break is good, and it must be hard to pick up. Two ball, two strike count. Jeter shaded it short over to third. 2 2 delivery, and it'll be fouled off the other way. There was a reading an article in one of his early starts. It was up at Fenway, and he gave up a 462 home foot home run to uh, David Ortiz. And then Napoli came up and hit another home run, not quite as far, I think 405 feet. And they said you could even never tell that he gave him up. And I think what happens, and because he's so experienced, he went 24 and 0 last year. He's 11 and 1 this year, uh, 24 and 0 in Japan. Is that there's usually a reason why they're hitting the home runs. The guys that are at the plate, and you probably got a ball in the middle of the plate, so he just goes back to business, and yep. nothing really bothers him. And wins games. Yeah. Three two delivery on the way, lash foul. How about the fact he came out of Japan with 99 wins? He was 99 and 35 in the years that. He pitched overseas seven years. I mean, that's a lot of baseball for someone who's still just 25 years old. He had a 24 win season, as Jim mentioned, 24 and 0 in his final year there. On the eighth pitch of the at bat, Manny Machado will put one in the air to left field. That's back. Gardner there at the wall, and he's got it. Yeah, that's one of those Camden Yard home runs, but maybe you throw it here because you're in Yankee Stadium and you have some room. The Orioles are going to return home tomorrow in a three game series to kick it off against the White Sox Tuesday Ollie's Bargain Night presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet will return all upper reserve seats nine dollars in advance. Gather up family friends have a great night at the yard tickets now at Orioles dot com or eight 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 four eight bird. Two down nobody on here's Jonathan Scope who had the home run off Tanaka. In the first meeting they had, the one for three off the right hander. Yeah, it was the high slider, so he, I don't know if that was a fastball because it was only 89, but it looked good. like it zoomed. Yeah, he did. I mean, he swung at it like it was a fastball, and it was by him. Oh, one delivery on the way. Tanaka's given up home runs. I mean, he's given up 10, five to righties, five to lefties, but not much in between. Batting average 216 against him overall is the fifth best in the American League. One ball, one strike count on Jonathan Skill. And the second baseman will reach and foul it back. He's got a very simple windup. I mean, it, it, to me, it's very functional. I mean, it's very athletic. As a 10th grader, uh, apparently they didn't need pitchers. He was born in. Just outside of Osaka, and he went to high school up by Sapporo. So the weather a lot different. That's where they had the Winter Olympics, but they needed a catcher, so he caught through high school, and he did some pitching, and he was a good hitter. One-two delivery on the way, and foul back again. So Scope holds it at a ball and two strikes. Tanaka's only loss came against Chicago, and it was back on May 20. Gave up just four runs and eight hits, and only three of those four runs were earned. He worked six innings, he had a walk, seven strikeouts, so it's not as though he had a bad performance in the one loss. When you're 35 and one, I guess we, it's not friendly uh, <laughs> Wrigley Field, is it? No. I never found friendly Fenway either, which they put a nickname on, but of course the Orioles will spend a week in Chicago in August, White Sox and then Wrigley Field. It's going to be some trip. <laughs> he said, Hello, Rush Street. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way. And that ball in the air to left field. Gardner's going to go back. Has he done it again? And goodbye, home run. How about that? Jonathan Scope has delivered two home runs this season against Tanaka and has given the Orioles a 1 0 lead. And the same pitch that he hit back in April for the three run. But that one was right down the line. So it's probably the right pitch, but Jonathan said, boy, a good location for me because he just hangs it. And uh, as you mentioned, runs with a 199 ERA, hard to come by. So a little frivolity in the Oriole uh, dugout. So the youngster scope delivers again with two down. Here's Joseph. 
He'll take the pitch for a ball. Now take a look. This is a slider supposed to be down and away, and it stays up. And you can see how strong he is, though, because it is away. So he has to reach for it. And Jonathan Scope now has got two career home runs in this ballpark. That'll be fouled back, and Dale Timms of Centerville's liking it. Our Maryland Lottery contestant gets another $500. Scope uh, hitting over 375 in the few chances he's had here at Yankee Stadium. That's seven hits now in 17 at bats in this ballpark and two homers. A one ball, one strike count. Joseph. Shift on in the infield will foul it off. And a one ball, two strike count. A lot of starts now behind the plate for Caleb Joseph, who had a big play in the first inning yesterday on a caught stealing that kind of set the pace for the ball game for the Orioles. Joseph uh, in his 23rd start as a catcher. And the pitch will just miss McCann framing it. Yeah, that's a terrific take. Jim, he's up to 43 pitches. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and Dillman had over 20, I think 23 in the first. So both of these guys, the first two guys got on against Tanaka and then he had to go to work, but they made him work. 2 2 delivery on the way. Joseph will take it again. And that's down low, and it goes to. Three and two. Well, I'm sure he paid attention to the four home runs that were hit yesterday. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of difference because it's not obviously this is his 15th start, but that will get your attention when guys go deep. Four Orioles, times. yeah. 29 home runs now, leading the majors in June. Three-two pitch on the way. Joseph couldn't hold up. He'll become a strikeout victim, but the Orioles get a run on a hit with nobody left on base for Jonathan Scope. There aren't many who say I like hitting against Tanaka. He's one of them. Later in our ball game, brought to you by Miller Light. So the Orioles get the lead. Jonathan Scope. That is the ninth home run the Orioles have had this series this season against the Yankees. On the year, the Orioles have out homered the Yankees 9 6 in direct competition. So Chris Tillman with a run to work with. He will be facing McCann, Beltran, and Johnson coming up against him here in the second inning. Can did not play against Tillman in years past, so he's going to get a look at him for the first time. Tillman's delivery to the left hander, and that'll be taken down low. We mentioned how the lefties have hit Tillman at a 302 clip. Right handers only 227. Last year, left handers were 247. This year, 302. 1 0 pitch. Yeah, that pitch uh, would have been probably two, three inches over, and would, instead of being a ball and into a really good hitter's count. So now Brian McCann, he, and he got a couple of hits on Friday night. Triple home run, five RBIs earlier in the week. 
ball to center. Out into the Meadowlands. And that will be hauled in. Jones to get it. McCann retired one down here in the second inning. So as Jim has mentioned, here we go again with another one of these innings for Tillman. It's inning number one and inning number two that have been the big run purveyors for opponents. So he did throw 23 pitches in the first inning. Tanaka was, uh, I think, at 22, so both had to work. Designated hitter Carlos Beltran, who had the walk off home run in the series. He will take the pitch, and it is in there for a strike. Beltran continues to have a bit of a struggle at the plate. He's uh, starting to pick it up, four hits in his last 13 at bats. Pitch is going to miss down low. Cal will go to one ball and one strike. Tillman trying to settle it in, be efficient and effective in this one. 1 1 delivery. Gets the ground ball hit on top of that one. Scope's got it. Over to Davis. Couple of quick outs here in the second inning. Don't forget, you can join the conversation. Check out Masset Orioles on Facebook. Join the game chat to interact with fellow Oriole fans about our ball game. Log on to www.facebook.com slash Masson Orioles. Scroll down to our game and you can start chatting. Still away. Yeah, another guy with great numbers. 400 hitter. Four for 10 with a home run. Kelly Johnson. Yeah. Now the left handed batters. Yankee lineup loaded with the lefties. Jeter, the right hander, to share the switch hitter. Beltron, switch hitter. Solarte, switch hitter. Here's the 0 1 pitch. And uh, get that one by him upstairs. Foul tipped into the mitt. 0 and 2. And Johnson with the 0 for 4 in the ball game yesterday, making his second start of the series. 0 2 delivery to him, and that'll go the other way foul. So we're seeing a much better fastball, and I don't know if that number just through what now going into his uh, 16th start of the year is an aberration, but I always thought and Ben McDonald was talking about it today that lefties are easier to get out. First thing you see, well, you come around right now, you see the club. And a swing and a miss. So Tillman will pick up the strikeout. That is his first. He retires the side in order. And the first two innings where he has struggled, he gives up nothing in this game. Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. By AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Luna. For beautiful new carpet, hardwood, and laminate, call 877-241-LUNA. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, packed Yankee Stadium again. They had a sold-out crowd yesterday, SRO. Today was Old Timers Day with all the great Yankee names on hand, including Barra and Ford, among a long list of others. So they were here since 11 o'clock for many of them. Cast a thousand. Yeah. Boy, they do a nice job. Yep. 
Played a, a baseball game for an hour. Yep. Reggie was here, of course. Trying to hit home runs, couldn't do it. Well, Didn't get a couple of hits, though. Jesse, Bar out. Jesse Barfield hit a home. Oh, Reggie. Yeah. yeah. No, Reggie, yeah. It's not October yet. Nigmeyer oh. can't get the strike. Yeah, Mr. October, I mean, that's why he can't hit home runs for October. Stewart. Marquegas, the base hit his first time up, couple of hits. He intended bats in the series. His first hit off Tanaka. He's one for five against the Yankee right hander. And Nick will ground that one towards first base to share a big hop Tanaka to cover. Now, Buck was introduced today, former Yankee skipper, of course. He got a tremendous hand from the Yankee crowd. The Baltimore Rays. Let's welcome Buck Show off. Then he sees uh, Gene Michael, which is the only yeah. reason he agreed to yeah. participate because Stick Gene Michael came in and asked him to do it. Buck was not going to do it, and there was no way he was putting on anything resembling a pinstripe. <laughs> Here is Pierce, and he will file it off. Buck was funny because they asked him before today if he would be willing to come out, and they wanted him to be part of the whole ceremonies. And Buck was kind of aghast, like, "You got to be kidding me." Think I'm putting on a Yankee uniform and coming out here as a manager of the Orioles? Well, he asked me Friday, and I'm sure he said the same to you. I said, "Well, if you win the first two, and that that didn't happen because no. of the walk-off home run by Beltran." I said, "Maybe I might think about it." Yeah, <laughs> and then Buck in the press conference was funny in a way because Buck was they asked him, you know, what do you think of the old timers day and everything? Well, Buck says, "You know, we got our own heroes. We got a legends." Area back in Baltimore. Right, we have our own tradition. Our yeah. own tradition. And you said the thing about that is all those guys recognize Jim Palmer included. They all won a championship. Can the Yankees say that? <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike delivery on the way, and it is there for a strike. I liked his line. What was his line? He said uh, when one of the writers said, uh, "He said I'm not par paranoid. I'm just overly alert." We're going to give you more of that. that let, that's one yep. of the great quotes. We're going to let you hear that live, yeah. actually, a little bit later. <laughs> It's all like a monologue. It's like turning it on is. Johnny Carson. It's in our buck yeah. bite. We got a buck bite today. A buck bite. A well, buck bite. We've got to get somebody to do that for us. Actually, Mike Bordick does that pretty well. The introduction. Buck bite. Buck bite. Buck bite. Buck bite. Well, buck he got to the Mike ballpark. Uh, actually, the car he came out and took him to to Shea, to, to Shea Stadium. Oh, don't get him going on that. Yeah, it was great. Oh my gosh. Sunday said, morning, those words were not appropriate. <laughs> I said, but at least you look good. He had a nice suit on and everything. He said an hour and a half. Oh, is he happy about that? Pierce pops it away. Here's Pierce who delivered a home run in the ball game yesterday. Yeah, you really don't uh, want to throw him a fastball in the middle of the plate. A lot of his teammates saying there are not too many fastballs. And Kuroda got him out with sliders. When he made a mistake, he doubled down into the corner. So you can throw him the breaking ball, but it better be a good one. And like that, that one is. Yep. So he gets a strikeout. And a single his first time up four K's for tonight. Yeah, they might have had their chance early on, but if he gets into a groove where he gets ahead, he can do that, and that's the splitter. Doesn't have to throw it for a strike. Again, with two strikes, the league hitting 121, and that number going down. And that will bring up Adam Jones. Jones flied out to left field his first time up. Jones coming into today's play with a 316 average. In the month of June, and seven home runs in June. Two down, nobody on, and the pitch will be taken for a ball. He leads the American League in home runs in June with seven and in RBIs for the month. He and Cruz continue to pound him out for the Orioles. Here's the 1 0 delivery from Tanaka, and that's outside 2 0. Adam having a certainly all star first half of the season warrants the votes to be back at the all star game in the outfield. 2 0 delivery. Adam will take first strike. You know that great, great article today uh, in the New York Times about Tony Gwynn, Dave Magadan, who's now the hitting instructor with Texas, saying, boy, he did he learn from Gwynn. And he said, Tony used to tell him if you're looking for a pitch and you don't get it until you get the two strikes take it. I think that's what Adam did. Yep. You know it, it's got to be your pitch. So they'll call you out on strike one and two and boy, when you read that someone it should be must be reading for all hitters. And I think even pitchers probably would get a good 
But if until you get to two strikes, you can hit on your terms. Now if you better battle. And that's what Tony Gwynn was quoted as saying. Two ball, two strike count with two down. And he'll go the other way, and he's got a base hit. And that is exactly what you do to try and overcome that two strike problem. You take it where it's given and yeah. go where you can. Well, June started for him with, you talk about the seven home runs, uh, about three or four of them have been to right center field. I mean, this one obviously down the line. It's a fastball away. If you try to pull it, you'll probably break your bat and hit a ground ball to second or short. He put the shift on, and you know, the sheriff playing exactly where you should have played, which is off the line, and he takes advantage of it because he does go where the pitch is. So Cruz will get an at bat with a runner at first, four hits for the Orioles, who lead one nothing on the home run by Scope in the second, playing here in the top of the third inning. And it's those kind of bats that get the pitch count up and gets Cruz up, and when you get him up, there's a good sinking fastball. But if you get him up, more chances to hopefully add to your lead. Nelson with the 0 1 count. They're looking for his first hit off Tanaka. He's 0 for 4. Yeah, this is the kind of ballpark. It's so vast, uh, left center, right center, that any ball up the gap, you could score easily from first base. Chopper, there's nobody there. Charging over, running play, Solarte. He was moved way around the other way. Nice play to get to it. No runs, one hit, no errors. One left on base. We go to the bottom of the third with the Orioles. From John Shea of the San Francisco Chronicle regarding Tony Gwynn. He died of cancer, which he blamed on his long term use of smokeless tobacco. Tony Clark, head of the Players Union and other union reps, should survey their membership and do a better job of curtailing tobacco use. Gwynn's death needs to be a wake up call. Here, here, Players Union, get that done. Other Sunday column, Richard Griffin, Toronto Star. Do you know there's another Hall of Fame? Unmistakable Montreal Expos feel. Yesterday's induction ceremony, Canadian. Baseball Hall of Fame inductees Tim Wallach Murray Cook. He had the great broadcaster who had been around for so long Dave Van Horn and the late Blue Jay scout Jim Ridley inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah Dave uh, Van Horn lives down in the uh, West Palm Beach area down in Florida so I run into him every once in a while long time in. Solarte will lead it off here. Tony Gwynn admitted before his death that he was addicted in an ESPN column on him. The writer said. Tony said to me I'm a tobacco junkie. I have tried everything to give it up. I sneak out of the house to buy smokeless tobacco. I can't let my wife know. Play is made uh, by Jonathan Scope. And then uh, he got the cancer of the. Of the salivary glands and uh, it was a third fourth. Cancer stage and Tony went through. Hell. And what he had to do to try and overcome that and he didn't. We saw him last year, and uh, of course, you know, fellow Hall of Famer, just tragic. And it's, you know, I saw it when I was a rookie up in we playing in Winnipeg. I was playing for Cal Ripken Sr. and Bobby Litchfield was a utility player, and we played a doubleheader. We had come out at Duluth the night before, 
got in about 11 o'clock. We slept for a half an hour, went to the ballpark, whistle day. And in between games, I see Bobby down in the dugout, down the bullpen, and he's throwing up. And I said, what happened to him? Is he sick? They said, no, he swallowed his chewing tobacco. Never, ever put it in my mouth, but so many players do it. Yep. And that's not even the smokeless tobacco. And it's probably not as prevalent, the, you know, the chew. But he used to walk in any dugout after you'd see the sunflower seeds, and then you'd see all the uh, cans. And, uh, the, yeah, well, the, and that and the yellow, just the, the spit. You know, and take bubble gum and put it in with the chewing tobacco. And pretty nasty habit. And, Mm. One one delivery and the pitch taken down low well hopefully the players association will respond because the commissioner just cannot come in and ban the use which Bud would like to do Bud Seeley commissioner of baseball. He would like to just say no it is a negotiable issue. So it has to be something that's worked out between MLB and the players association before it can be done. Well Tony Clark's a you know, former player and you know, certainly Michael Weiner passed away over the winter and. I mean, he certainly knows what goes on, and he knows how. I mean, you want you you know that's a tragic thing is w when you play as I have as long you're around the game almost 50 years, you lose a lot of friends for needless reasons. I mean, people die of old age and things like that. And off the glove of Tillman and into center field, each row's got a one out single. But you want your friends to be around because you know you saw that on the field today here in Yankee Stadium. You know, guys that. Played with each other and they were on the same team, the championship team, they're going to the playoffs, going to spring training, having a common goal, and you know, you know each other's families and wives and kids and all that. Put those people around as long as you can. And uh, obviously, smokeless chewing tobacco does not uh, aid in that, in that happening. Top of the order, Gardner, biggest play of the game so far, perhaps that double the Gardner got trying to extend it to a triple, got thrown out, it was called safe. But Showalter came out and challenged it, and they overruled the call on the field. That was the first out of the inning. Second hit for the Yankees. Gardner will take the pitch, and it will be up high. Gardner's got a six for 16 lifetime off Tillman. Well, they worked the count into his favor, and I uh, want to walk the leadoff batter. Chris didn't, and he hit a bullet into the corner for what looked like would be a triple until. Great relay, Marquecas scope to Marquecas or to uh, Machado, and he kept the tag on him. He came off the bag. And 1 0 in corner, inside corner strike. Yeah, he hasn't recovered from yesterday where he got called out twice on balls. One time inside he thought was in, and the next time away. He flipped the helmet, the bat. He was lucky he didn't get thrown out yesterday. Well, he, but the one thing he did do, he was walking. Yes, away. To get his glove, and towards it was his third out of the inning, so. One ball, one strikeout. Each row on at first base, being held by Davis. Tillman's delivery, off speed outside. Nobody's run on Tillman this year. I mean, they've tried it once and were caught. The only attempt against him. So he's got the runners thinking two or three times before they extend that lead at first base. And he's got Joseph behind the plate, who's thrown out 47 percent of base stealers. Pretty good lead for each row. 2 1 delivery, runner not going inside. You now, again, you worry about the runner at, at first. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but he's gotten behind. But he's so adept for a big guy at 6 5, and touching 6 6. That, that angle we just showed you shows you how quick he is to the plate. And if you're a catcher, you, know, you, you want to get the pitcher to get you the ball before under 1.3 seconds, and then it's your job to get it down there under 2.1 seconds. Delivery on the way. That's a strike in the inside corner. And Gardner. Gardner's becoming the B-Lamp Bill Lambeer of baseball. <laughs> there is never a pitch he doesn't swing at that's a strike. Well, that ball probably maybe a shade off the corner. Take a look. Yep. One of those ones that just grazes the uh, chalk line that you demarcates the uh, the batter's box. Bill Lambeer never committed a foul in no. the NBA ever. Here's the 3 2 coming. See if the runner goes, he does. Each row's off and it's foul back. So let's take a look at the Oriole defense brought to you by Chevrolet. And it's a good one. 38 errors on the year. Cruz, Jones, Marquecas. Jones and Marquecas have one gold gloves. Machado and Hardy, gold glovers. Manny the Platinum, the best of the golders. Shope already with a great relay. Davis and then Caleb Joseph. I laugh about Lambeer because I grew up a Celtic fan and Johnny Most was one of the most pronounced homer announcers in all of sports history. And if you were a Celtic fan, you loved him. But he 
he detested Bill Lambert. <laughs> 3-2, delivery on the way, runner goes again, and it is going to be ball four, and Gardner is on with the free pass, the second surrendered by Tillman, two on and one up. Jeter. Jeter grounded out his first time up as a six for 14 now, lifetime off Tillman. And here's a chance for the Yankees to get the ball game tied up. Two on, one away. Yeah, usually, uh, at least lifetime over 300 runners in scoring position. This year at 274. Yankees had an 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position yesterday. They're 4 for 21 in the series. First chance of the ball game. Jeter and a strike call. Running the record books all over the place. So you see the most career doubles among active players of Rayu Pujols and Derek Jeter. Ortiz right behind you. Yeah, that's. I mean, they both played a long time, and obviously Abreu and you know Albert still at age 34 playing for the Angels. But Ortiz, it's a lot of doubles for a guy that's not known for his speed. Of course, Fenway Park certainly doesn't you know, can pepper that wall with the best of them. 0 oh, 1 the count. Great speed out there with Ichiro at second and Gardner at first. Here's the 0 1 delivery on the way, and Jeter will fight it all. I didn't think there was anything that Jeter had left to accomplish that he hadn't already done in baseball. Then a week ago, Friday, in a game against Tampa Bay that went 14 innings, he went 0 for 7. He had never gone 0 for 7 in his career. He'd gone 0 for 6. A number of times, but never 0 for 7. Hitless 597 times in ball games, which, considering the number of games he's played, is a very good number. Oh, now there's a pitch that easily. And we've seen some questionable pitches that usually aren't called against Eric Jeter in Yankee Stadium, but this is a ball that's borderline around the knees, and well, you. For Chris Tillman, you would, it would have been nice to see the umpire's hand go up, but it doesn't. Now one ball, two strike count. Runners first and second. Another one that's going to be fouled off into the seats. Yeah, 94. You didn't see that too much from Chris Tillman this year. All the new umpires who have been called up this year because of the umpires being used here in New York in the replay, it's Players, coaches, everybody's trying to get a read on a number of umpires. Probably more new umpires in one season than has ever happened uh, before. Yeah, and hitters and pitchers, all they want is consistency. They want to know what the strike zone is, and hopefully he could do that for nine innings. One, two fouled off. Tom Woodring, the home plate umpire, is one of those new umpires. He has been a professional umpire since 2006. Last was in the uh, Pacific Coast League. Or being moved over to uh, the crews of Major League Baseball. Well, you mentioned that again, being so young, you really don't know. But today, I thought early that he favored uh, the hitter, and then I'm sure there's some hitters who will say, I'm not sure he really gave me a whole lot of favors on some of the pitches called. Here's the one-two delivery on the way. Jeter will go to short. It'll be played for one and two. Hardy to Jonathan Scope to Davis. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one. Left on base. The Orioles still up. One up.
Wagon, May 1, 2012. Buck Showalter is 1,000. Managerial win. The Orioles beat the Yankees by a score of 7 to 1. Showalter guided teams to eight winning seasons, won the American League Manager of the Year Award in 1994 and 2004. And that's victory 1,000 for the skipper. Don't think he didn't like the fact it came against the Yankees. Right, yeah, well. <laughs> Just the competitiveness, isn't he? Well, I mean, he started his, uh, his uh, baseball career with the Yankees. Yeah. yeah. Played for Johnny Oates. That's why he wears the number 26, which was Johnny's number. That should be taken inside. Credit Stump Merrill, who was uh, for an interim period a manager here and played and was with the Yankees forever. Stump was the one who kind of pulled Buck along through the minor leagues and pointed him out to the brass upstairs. Foul tipped into the mid. Davis strikeout victim his first time up. Tanaka hasn't walked anybody. He has struck out four. The Orioles are run on four hits. Jonathan Scopes home run second inning. Tillman a couple of walks one strikeout no runs two hits for the Yankees. Tanaka's fastball is going to be away. Five and zero oh at home. Part of the 11 and one record Tanaka has. Davis to be followed by Hardy. Machado towering fly ball to center Ellsbury. Don't miss your chance to lock in seats to the best remaining games of the season. Enjoy major league savings by reserving your Birdland summer pack six pack. You get tickets to any six games you choose You save up to 20 percent off the cost of single game tickets. You can lock in your seats for the most anticipated games and promotions. Just go to Orioles.com slash Six pack. Hardy grounded out his first time up. They'll give Hardy the middle here as Jeter plays deep and over towards third. Solarte moves over a bit towards second. Big hole between the shortstop and the second baseman. Yeah, you would. Uh, that's the way you describe you play a guy to pull in the infield. Pretty much, what maybe a step or two to pull in the outfield. Hardy will take it for a strike. Yeah, with Gidry, Sparky, Lyle, a lot of the lefties here he used to have medals over a third. And Bucky Dent to play shortstop, and it's very tough to hit it into that hole and get it into left. I thought the, the, off the bat that JJ ball would get in there. Jeter's just almost standing there the first time up. Two ball, one strike count. Hardy will rip it, and it'll be a one hopper in. Numero uno home run. Yeah, oh, yeah young uh, hard thrower. And Ramirez at 95 up and in and you can see the glee. <laughs> the joyful. And then they give up the. Uh, this the fifth quiet treatment. Yeah. Over yeah. In the, yeah. <laughs> fifth career home run here in this ballpark for Hardy. He said he knew it was coming. I love Manny Machado who was waiting on deck yesterday just as he is now when Hardy crossed the plate you know he's the first one to greet he never looked at him I mean he walked by him like Hardy didn't exist <laughs> up to the plate here's the three two delivery and that went up in the air to left field Gardner moving over to the gap a bit and there are two down time for all fans to tweet your photo using hashtag Masson fan photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast brought to you by AT&T. I long to have the show that has the outtakes on fan photos. On fan photos? Yeah. Oh yeah. Somehow I think <laughs> there would be a collection there. You wouldn't want to show until after one in the morning. <laughs> Just a guess. <laughs> Manny Machado flied out to left field his first time up. He had a really good swing. I mean, deep to little slider that uh, he just missed hitting a home run. Ball up a little bit. He probably would have been able to drive a little bit more, but and he will ground that one towards the Shero who's playing way over. And Tanaka gets over the cover, and there's his first one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The Orioles trying to win this series up one nothing.
back for the achiever in you. The wait is on for Dylan Bundy. Yeah, I talked to um, Dean Albany, longtime Oriole scout, actually a former uh, professional player, Baltimore native, and he said he called me last night. Said uh, coming back, saw Dylan uh, Bundy pitch, 92-93, really had good command. Of course, Dylan said I need to throw harder, and I probably will. So, and. Uh, I thought Brian Graham said it best. He said, "This is a rehab year. Yep. You want to make sure when you have somebody that talented and you gave him that kind of money, just make sure he gets through the year where he's comfortable to come back and pitch forever next year." This is what Dylan had to say, and are worth repeating in our major league notebook. He said, "The first two innings felt like I was able to throw the fastball anywhere I wanted, any time. I just have to be able to do that. Fourth, fifth, and sixth still have work to do. There's still that velocity to get back. Obviously." Feel like I'm competing the way I used to. I'm going at batters for the fastball. Competing wise, I feel like I'm my old self. Those were Dylan Bundy's words after his second start to the uh, single A Aberdeen. Well, yeah, Dean was talking, and but I always liked to bow. First time I ever saw him, I said, "Gee, he looks like he has a little bit of a Nolan Ryan wind up in the sense it's very compact, and not a lot of moving parts. Very, you know, able to repeat. And apparently, that's what he did last night early. Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, he drew a walk his first time up. It'll be Ellsbury to Shara and McCann coming up. Ellsbury, after all those years competing against the Yankees in Boston, 298 last year with the Red Sox, 297 career hitter. Consistency in the time he's been in the majors, coming up with the Red Sox back in 07. Yeah, he's about uh, 20 points or so below uh, his lifetime batting average. Or maybe yeah. Yep, 279 right now. I think ideally that he would not be a number three hitter. Certainly wasn't for the Red Sox. I mean, you go back three years ago when he had 32 home runs. He smacks yeah. that one into the corner. It'll be rolling around the wall. Nick Marquez has to wait for it, and it'll be a double leading off the fourth inning for Ellsbury. Now he's always been able to. Hit, uh, as you mentioned against the Orioles, so you know, be able to get good pitches to hit and not miss them. And this is a perfect example. It's a screamer down in the corner, and he's thinking triple until Nick Marquez gets to it. So, tremendous speed with 21 steals out at second base. So, the potential tying run is on now at second with nobody out here in the fourth inning. Second leadoff batter to reach base after the double by Gardner in the first. And here is Mark Teixeira who flied out to right field. The Orioles will have the infield shift on with Hardy staying close to the bag to hold the runner. And Teixeira will take the pitch outside for a ball. Yeah, this is where you can't get caught up with the one nothing lead of being really so picky that you don't throw strikes to Teixeira even though he's swinging the bat pretty well as you mentioned 10 game hitting streak. Just don't want to stay away from the big inning because the. Uh, Again, even if they get a run, and a lot of times when you're into the heart of the lineup, that's what leadoff doubles do. Just do not put a crooked number on the board. Not against Tanaka. Only their check second chance with a runner in scoring position, 0 for 1. Yankees hitting 255 as a team in these situations, seventh in the American League. 2 0 count to Shara. He'll get one into that shift. Jonathan Scope, long throw. He'll get it there, but the Shara has an effective at bat as he gets the runner. Moved up to third base with only one away. The latest voting numbers for the All Star game several Orioles looking for your votes. Nelson Cruz leading in the DH. Matt Wieters catcher Adam Jones for an outfield spot. Hardy Davis Machado Marquez all there. You can vote at Orioles.com slash vote orange. Earn dis uh, ticket discounts and a chance to win an autographed All Star game jersey. Just go to Orioles.com slash vote orange. Cash to vote. You can vote up to. 35 times. So the Orioles about they're not really even halfway, but they are a couple of steps in, especially at third base with Machado. Everybody else, a couple of steps when they normally would play. There's a big uh, outcoming right here, a pop up by McCann to third, Machado, and an enormously yeah. important out for the moment. Well, it was an enormously great pitch, too. And again, if you're Brian McCann, you come over to this league from the National League, if you're going to swing at this pitch, well, you better be looking at it. I don't think he was. I mean, perfect pitch. It's up out of the zone. You know, still a lot better velocity from Chris Tillman as we've seen in uh, the past month or so. Straight up. Right so up the down. elevator. Yeah, then two down. 
Ellsbury still at third base. Beltran grounded out his first time up. He's only a buck 80 with runners in scoring position. Two down and the pitch to him, an off speed delivery. That's going to miss outside just 75 miles an hour in the changeup. Well, he is such a good, I mean, he's a guess hitter. He's a high ball hitter. Even the ball that it, he, he grounded out to scope it to, at first base or to second base was about belt high. Away again with it. Three wild pitches on the season for Tillman that'll. He bells very alive and off the bag. Machado playing off third, so we can get pretty good secondary lead down there. I wonder if Beltran will look for a change up here because you would think this would be the pitch that Chris Tillman throws. 2 0 count. And Beltran Ooh. fouls it back on a fastball. Yeah. And he had a good swing. Beltran not facing Tillman before today. Straight up infield and outfield. Yeah pitch, yeah, pitch count at what 65 is pretty much what he's done all year. Yep. A little bit tick higher than last year. 2 1 away. So a three ball, one strike count to Beltron with Johnson, Kelly Johnson waiting on deck. Orioles have the 1 nothing lead on the homer by Scope that came in the second inning. Beltron trying to tie it up here with a base hit. Look over to third, 3 1 pitch on the way. Beltran will take it. That is a walk. Corners covered, two down. Walk number three by Tillman. One in the first, one in the third, and one here. Now, Kelly Johnson, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Johnson, much better numbers than Beltran with <laughs> runners in scoring position at 278. And came in uh, four for 10. Against Tillman, better numbers against Chris, but he threw the ball right by him. We'll see if he could do it again. First and third, two away. Really good high ball hitter from this side. And he'll take the pitch inside for a ball. For Johnson, uh, this season, four home runs, 16 RBIs. Kelly Johnson with. 40 strikeouts, 14 walks. Doing some platooning at third base with Salarte, who's playing second today, resting Brian Roberts. 1 0 delivery, that is there. He didn't like the call, 1 1. And we've seen him, and when he was playing with the Toronto a couple of years ago, actually hit some home runs to left center. He's not just a, it's a high ball hitter, but he's not just a pull hitter. One ball, one strike count. Up the middle, right into the glove of Tillman, who saves his own bacon. A line drive by Kelly Johnson. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left on base. Can you catch this? Yes, I can.
Bassett is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. By visit Annapolis.org. Find it here. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now. OCOcean.com. Here in New York, where the Orioles will be back in uh, September, play the Yankees again. The Yankees will be making visits to Baltimore, as these uh, two teams have only played what their six games. Yeah, three more. I think July and August and September in Baltimore. Jonathan Scope, he had the home run, which is the only one up on the board. His second homer against Tanaka in the two games he's played against him. He's got six on the year now. Scope, Joseph, and Marcakis. Tanaka's 1 0 delivery to him, and that's going to be outside. We come into the Sunday with Toronto leading the Yankees by a game and a half, and the Orioles by two and a half. The Red Sox struggling again. They've lost three in a row. They're now seven and a half out. Tampa Bay a dozen games behind Toronto. 2 0 pitch, and he laces another one. Gardner this time's got room. Man. Yeah, well, you know, part of hitting is getting good pitches to hit, and that was a fastball in the middle of the plate. The other thing is looking for it. So he misses with a slider. He's sitting on a fastball, what did Buck Walter said? And they try to come in, and he really doesn't get it in. It is laced, but right at Gardner, who's a plus defender. Right at him. Well, those are the quality of bats that you want Jonathan to start having, and a lot of it has just, again, hit on your terms to get to two strikes. And the way to learn that is to get your advance. Joseph will file that one off at the plate. Tigers have retaken first in the central. Kansas City led at the beginning of the week. They've lost three in a row. Tigers won three in a row. They lead by a game and a half. Cleveland's right back in it. They're only four out. Minnesota five. And the White Sox, who are coming to Camden Yards tomorrow, they are in last place, but only six games out. White Sox have lost three in a row coming into today's play. Ball put up in the air, not deep. Coming on is Gardner. Blair, he's got it. And there are two away. Oriole fans can earn rewards for sharing and posting Orioles content on social media. Joining the O's Bird's Nest. The conversation goes on at O'sBirdsNest.com. Enter today's bonus code, Frank, before midnight tonight. Receive two bonus tokens and be entered to win a monthly prize of an autographed player photo with a year-end prize of tickets for the opening day next year. Join the O's Bird's Nest today and get rewarded. Nick Marquez, he is single and grounded out. Two down, nobody on. And a strike. Yeah, the Orioles would like to kind of get uh, into one of those uh, roles where, what, Kansas City's won 15 out of 16, 10 in a row at one point. And then uh, you said the Indians, uh, they came into Baltimore, had a real good weekend. They've won 13 out of 20. Tough loss last night. They had a full yeah. house in Cleveland and tied it up in the bottom of the ninth inning, only to lose it in the tenth. One and one, two away. Arcakis, and to extend the inning, 78 pitches thrown now by Tanaka. And Nick will get one off the fist foul. National League, Washington's moved ahead of Atlanta again by a half game. Miami's only a game and a half out. The Phillies, amazingly, are only four out, and perhaps even most amazing, the Mets, they are just five games out in the National League East. I think the Phillies have won nine out of 11. Huh. And uh, Cliff Lee has had an elbow problem, so not even, uh, he's on the disabled list. Here's the 1 2 delivery on the way. Marquegas will take it inside. Brew Cruz ahead of the Cardinals by five and a half, and the Giants over the Dodgers by four. As we head into the new week coming up here, with summer starting officially yesterday. At 525? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 2 2 delivery on the way, and that's bounced. Yeah, well, yeah, half an hour later, Starbucks opens in some places in the world. <laughs> You're not going to let them forget no. that, are you? I just, that uh, was. It befuddled me. And you know what? Is that Dave Wallace, the Royal Pitching Coach, had already beat me there. When I came back, he says, Got to get a Starbucks, didn't you? <laughs> I said, You Dave's, failed too, didn't you? Dave's yeah. up early. Yeah, well, I'm, when you get to be our age, <laughs> not That's our you age. and Dave. Dave yes, yeah, I'm thank not you. including you. 3 2 deliveries outside, and Tanaga surrenders his first walk. So Mark Agus going to make him throw a few more and keep this inning going. But two down, he's on, and Steve Pierce coming up. 
Well, the Toronto Blue Jays uh, today. They've uh, lost Bautista for the game. He left with a tightness in his left leg. That's all they're saying for the moment. And Lowry, their third baseman, has got a broken right index finger. He was hit by a pitch in Cincinnati. So their third baseman right now is out. And a little slider, it looked yeah. like, is in there for a strike. Yeah, it didn't end up in a good place, but I think it just fooled him. It's one of those front hip sliders where you. I don't know if you try to do it on purpose, but you kind of give up on it. Pierce has got a single and he has struck out. Infield shifted around. Marquez back to the back. Well, if you have your druthers, you want to try to stay away from the fastball unless you can locate it out of the middle of the plate. That's how hot Skeet Pierce has been. And then Corota tried to do that after striking him out the first two times, hung a slider, and he smoked it down into the corner. Pierce leads the Orioles in June with a 4-10 batting average coming in. Couple of home runs. Again, Marcakis. Well, as you were talking about yesterday, on the list of acquisitions or, or guys that look like when he was put on waivers and cleared could have gone to Toronto, chose to stay with the Orioles, and what a bonus that's been. Mm. Oh, one count on him. Tanaka's delivery laced. Will it stay fair down the line? It is going to be a foul ball into the second deck. Well, there's a hanging slider. Middle of second ahead of it. Sometimes you really get fortunate in this game, as good as Tanaka has been. And that's a slider that stays in the middle of the plate. And look at the lean. <laughs> Carlton Fisk yeah. would be proud, but it didn't work. And the count at 0 and 2. On Steve. The two down, Marcakis not going anywhere at first base to share a holding. 0 oh, 2 delivery, and that's there. Oh. So Tanaka will get the strikeout. That'll be his fifth of the ball game. The Orioles lead one on, the Orioles lead it 1 0. Uh, gets behind Gardner. He hits a ball down in the corner. Looks like a triple. But scope with a great relay to Machado. They come out. They challenge the call. It was the hand off the bag and the Machado tag uh, registered? It was. And then uh, here's a double play ball. Jeter as uh, Chris Tillman gets out of trouble. And then right here the line drive uh, right back to him by Kelly Johnson. So field your position. He's got a one nothing lead uh, Tanaka through five only the solo home run by scope and then uh, Tillman you know, the four innings and again the, the maybe the control not what he's used to but he has a one nothing lead going into the fifth and that is your Geico highlight that one hits him and goes to scope it'll be a one four three so again uh, Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance and boy throw it and then you become a defender. Nobody coming out. Tillman waving everybody off, including his catcher. 
but right about now you're thinking is the ball coming back and got him off the wrists. Boy, I'm surprised the man Richie Van Sells. Of course, he kind of pointed over there like I don't need you. And I'm sure he's going to ice that in between innings. A flesh Richie. wound. Taking a it's only a flesh wound. Yeah, exactly. One down in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Each are all. Each row with a single. His first time up. He's got a four game hit streak. Three for eight in the series. And that one will be fouled away. Well, the uh, the picture of uh, the juror today on the on the bus ride out, Gary, was the new hat they've made for pitchers. And they, you know, Tommy Hunter was showing around. I mean, it is a huge device. I mean, it makes you look like I don't know. I mean, that your head's long. And it was, it was a new device that they're thinking about because of so many pitchers have been hit over the last couple of years. And everybody was saying, could you really wear something? Because it's got protections all the sides and the front and whatever. And you look like maybe you're from out of space. Or really? Bit. Yeah. Well, that was one of the conversations, and we've seen a couple of balls hit right back up yep. the middle. And when you do release the ball, you know, Chris, 6'5", I bet he's probably 53 feet from home plate. You do not have much time to react. I smile because uh, in a moment here we're going to go to our Major League Notebook again because you reminded me of something we have in our You Can Look It Up page. 2-2 Two -two delivery on the way. Each row will pop that one down the line. Maybe Bermuda Triangle base hit. Nobody can get there, and Suzuki is two for two. Speaking of which, turning to our Major League notebook on the page that says you can look it up, Milwaukee Brewers scored three runs on a wild pitch in the third inning yesterday. That's three runs on a wild pitch. Wild pitch scored one. Pitcher went to get it. They threw back to the plate. That went wild. The runner on third base stopped. Nobody called timeout. He came in and he scored. Three runs. How about Alex Torres became the first pitcher to wear the protective cup approved for pitchers in yesterday's game against the Dodgers. Cap, the first cup. one. Oh, cap. Cap, sorry. Yeah, we've been wearing cups for 50 <laughs> years or more. <laughs> so there you go. There's the cap. It's not a cap, it's a helmet. It's a helmet. Yeah. All right, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's Gardner with a runner on at first base. Gardner a walk and a double. And the throw over and getting back is each row. Yeah, Chris, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you have to go all the way back. What Johnny Perret, uh, Paredes uh, stole a base, I think, last July. It's the last one. So big, you'd think the more taller the pitcher, the longer it gets to get to the plate, but he really does. Well. Not only does he, is he quick to the plate, he does hold runners well. And each row getting that big lead. And, and a frame, but not getting the call. And a 1 0 count here in the fifth inning. Gardner in that leadoff spot with Jeter to follow. And Nick Hundley threw out each row on Friday night. Perfect throw. One oh pitch on the way and uh, that will be out of play into the seats. I think we ought to have hats and cups up here in the uh, press box. We get a lot of balls that come back this way. Well definitely hats. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hats. I'm not hats sure if is. we need the protective cups nope. up here. Okay. Unless you do something to offend people, your think partner. we're from out of space anyway. Yeah, so well, that's yeah. Right. Well, no, that's why we so just. So if we wore the hat. helmet, nobody would even notice. That's right. Here they come again. <laughs> <laughs> one one delivery. Yeah. I caught that remark by the way. Unless you offend your partner, <laughs> then you want to have the protective <laughs> the cup. cup. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> one ball to strike out. Well, that's when I called. Uh, I, I, I was hoping everybody at home wasn't think that I was alluding to you when I said the, the old guys get up early. I'm really talking about Dave Wallace. Here. He and I are about the same age. Uh, <laughs> Royal pitching coach. Speaking of going out, look at your cups. Yeah. One ball, two strike count. <laughs> Pretty good lead over there at first base. No attempt to go though, and that pitch will be away. So well, Gardner yeah. gets uh, it evened up. Yeah, and you, you you get one more pitch before you know he's running. I mean, obviously he gets the three and two. He's going to run. And if Gardner does get a base hit or a double, good chance to maybe even score. Certainly get the third, and that's what you want to avoid. Last thing you want right here is that first and third. That's why you have to be so alert in the outfield here in Yankee Stadium and charge the ball. And the Orioles outfield does a great job of that. Two two. Joseph Machado. On top of the roof. 
Orioles outfield shortens up with the slasher Gardner who punches balls over that infield into the outfield. So both Cruz and Jones in left and center come in. Marqueca stays back in right field. Now he's hit four of his six home runs here at Yankee Stadium. And you know, you, you can throw him a change up and you can do it in this count because you can maybe just throw it to the outside corner and hope that you can throw it maybe just off the corner. But if the count gets to three and two, you have to throw a strike. So maybe you can't have the same quality of that off speed pitch. Two ball, two strike count. Runner not going. Another one. Well, the Back Yankees, in. because of the, I mean, it's just one of those days that it's not that Chris Tillman has pitched poorly. But the one pitch he has not thrown over, and Kevin Long, I'm sure the Yankee hitting instructor said, you can eliminate the hook, but you can't eliminate it when you get the two strikes because he still may throw it. But early on, they're not looking for it. They're looking fastball and hope that they get that pitch to hit, or maybe he makes a mistake with a changeup. Gardner, 263 against the Orioles this year. Here's the 2 2 delivery and a swing and a miss on the changeup. Yeah, and that was a good one. Great location and great movement. I mean, uh, this is the pitch last year that made the difference. That the fact the Orioles played so well. Chris went 5 and 0 in the month of June. So the perfectly located, perfectly thrown changeup to get the strikeout. Remember in the last ball game, Tillman had a game in which he did not strike out or walk a batter. That game against Toronto in his last outing. Now he's got a couple of strikeouts, three walks in this one. And Derek Jeter hit into a double play his last time up, 0 for 2 in a couple of ground balls. And the pitch will come inside to him. He actually, Derek made a nice adjustment, uh, hit it very hard, but right to J.J. Hardy at shortstop. He was late on the fastball, late on the fastball, and then jumped on a high one that hit it right at Hardy the shortstop for two. Jeter only 2 11 against the Orioles so far this year. 1 0 pitch, that'll be inside. Nice stop made by Joseph, who came up with it. Down goes to 2 0. 85 pitches thrown by the Orioles starter. For Jeter, lifetime against the Orioles, a 302 hitter, 24 home runs in the 279 games he's played. Boy, did he get jammed on that one. Only plays at first, but Chata will get it there, and a great job by Tillman. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Five complete on this Sunday. Orioles up. Dollars to support be more for healthy babies. 183 walks, $9,150. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. The Jim Palmer, I'm Gary Thoy. Great to have you with us on this Sunday. Mishihiro Tanaka with a walk and five strikeouts against Chris Tillman. 
three walks, two strikeouts, a pitcher's duel with the Orioles leading it one nothing. Each team with four hits. Yeah, Tanaka again. Remember, this is his 15th start. He has never failed to go six innings or more, and he's never given up over three runs. Talking about being on a roll, I kind of wondered. You know, 155 million dollars, 20 million dollars additional posting. Can anybody be that good? And the answer has been yes. yes. It is 11 and 1 record and 199 ERA. Well, he just has for a 25 year old kid, and of course, a lot of experience in Japan, and he just has a great sense of pitching. Here's Adam Jones. Adam had a single last time up, also has flied out. Jones, part of that four homer ball game yesterday. Orioles have never hit more than four here at Yankee Stadium in their history, even going back to the days when the franchise was in St. Louis as the Browns. Four home runs. Hit back in 1930 and then 66, 84, 86, 2000, and 2008. The last time an Orioles team had four home runs in New York against the Yankees. Here's the 2 0 delivery on the way. Jones will take that one to left off the end of the bat. Gardner's right there to get it. The Birds take on the Rays on Friday at Oriole Park on a special day night doubleheader. Separate games 105 and 705. In the afternoon, you can skip out of work, come see the ball game, then it's 705. The first 20,000 fans, 21 and over, will get the Orioles floppy hat presented by Miller Light. So get your tickets for both games now. Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Doubleheader Friday. Bonus. Bonus. Second game. A floppy hat night. Your favorite evening. It is. Summer hat. You'll see the rest of the summer around Baltimore. That one in the air to right field off the bat of Nelson Cruz. Each row is there. So four pitches and two outs. You know, you think you, you think maybe you got him in trouble. He gets behind Jones 2 0, throws a perfect slider. He hits a pretty good swing, but hits it on the end of the bat and then throws another slider. And all of a sudden, you think you may get to him. That reminds me of uh, when Catfish Hunter not only pitched for the Yankees, but he started with Oakland and he'd be in those playoffs and you say, geez, I got a chance to get to this guy. And inning after inning would go by. And it'd be the eighth, and you and, still. And you're not getting to him. <laughs> Davis with a strikeout, and he is flied out. Orioles back to Oriole Park at Camden Yards tomorrow. Wei and Chen and Chris Sale to open up the three against the White Sox. Miguel Gonzalez, Jose Quintana, and then Nivaldo uh, Jimenez and Hector Nosi in game three. All night games, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 6 30 for O's Extra. Seven o'clock for the ball game. Yeah, yeah. When you wonder about a pitcher, I mean, he pitches quickly. He throws strikes, repeats his windup. He's not predictable. He can pitch to both sides of the plate, and you never ever know what's coming. That will be taken down low by Davis. And it looks to me that when he wants to pitch down in the zone, he can. And when he wants to pitch up in the zone, he can elevate the ball. Not a lot of guys can do that. Pedro Martinez is, could do it about as well as anybody. No question, Tanaka is the real deal. One ball, two strike count. And Davis will become strikeout victim number six. That's a one, two, three inning, the second one he has had in the ballgame. The Orioles won, the Yankees nothing.
home, and it's the White Sox. Way in Chen on the mound against Chris Sale. Our coverage on Masson at 6.30 O's Extra, presented by Geico, followed by our game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. For the Chicago White Sox, you see their record. They've lost 10 of their last 14, last in the Central. The Bray has been their offensive leader. 251 is seventh, fifth in runs, and 14th in ERA. Yeah, they're playing the Twins, and of course, Abreu missed what about two two weeks with that left ankle injury. And I was looking at the box score, and they had him a single, and then I saw the highlight. He hit it off the top of the center, the right center field wall, so hard they could only get a single, and that's a long way in Minnesota. Big, long strong, day. right-handed hitter that apparently uh, what they gave him 68 million dollars out of Cuba. And, Another guy that's worth the money. White Sox for three starting tomorrow night. Ellsbury goes after the first pitch, fouls it back. Ellsbury has walked and doubled in the game. Five game hit streak for him. He's gone three for eight here in this series and overall up that average to a little over 370 against the Orioles this year. Ellsbury to Shera and McCann, the catcher, do up Tillman. So far, no runs, four hits for the Yankees. Comes over the top and gets the strike. Yeah, maybe a little cutter. And uh, the last time up, uh, Jacoby doubled into the corner. But two of the innings, first and fourth, they lead off double, but Gardner tried to stretch it into a triple, overslid the bag, and Royals challenge got a big, big out there. And there's a good changeup, turns it over, and bottom falls out of it. Orioles starters have allowed two or fewer earned runs now in 16 of the last 22. And in those games, the starters have won 4 4 ERA. So they've really picked it up. That ball's going to be lashed to center Jones over, and yeah. he's got it. But if you're not, well, a couple of things. If you're not playing uh, a couple of steps into left center, and this is a changeup that stays up, and Ellsbury's all over, and if you don't get a good jump, you don't catch this ball. And this is a triple. And Jonesy makes it look routine. Great jump. Good positioning. And one big out. Here's to Sheriff. He has grounded out and flied out, shift on. Take the pitch outside. Orioles starters needing to pick the pace up. They did not get off to a good start this year. And the Orioles, as with every other team, will go as far as your starters will take you. And the pitch will just miss. Oh, you mentioned Nui and Chen's going to pitch tomorrow. He's really, I mean, he's won seven games. He and Bud Norris lead the, the staff with seven wins. He's been a lot better, and he's going to have to because Chris Sale, six and one, pitch for the White Sox. Major League fly ball into that high sky. Jones. Yeah, does he see it? Yes, he does. Nick over to. Just in case. Well, one of those afternoons, yeah. yeah. The sun uh, in and out, and now mostly out. You see the fewest innings pitched for starters. The Rangers, incredibly, with all those injuries, the number one. The Orioles, though, are two. Fewest inning pitch for starters Twins, Indians, and White Sox. You've got to get that up, or you, of course, you ruin your bullpen. The Orioles have seen that happen in recent years. Well, they are trending in the right direction. Yes. yes, they are. It is in there for a strike, and it doesn't hurt, as Buck says, to have that six starter hanging around so that everybody feels like they really need to go out there and get it deep into ball games here and keep their position. Oh, one foul tipped. Bud Norris is on a day to day, Buck Showalter said before the game, coming up with a groin twinge. Well, he walked in pretty well yesterday, you know, today, and Buck doesn't think that he'll miss a start. And but you do have uh, what the off day on Thursday. Another one, one yeah. popped up in the infield. Hardy's coming in near the mound, and uh, he will put it away. So a 10 pitch sixth inning, retiring the side in order. He has set the Yankees down one, two, three now twice in the game.
It was Jonathan Scope against Tanaka, and it was gone. Second inning, two down, nobody on for Scope. His second home run against Tanaka on the year, and that came in the second, and it is still the only one up there on the board. And he will await an at bat. Hardy, Machado, and Scope do up as we go to the seventh. 1 4 and 0 oh for the Orioles, 0 oh, 4 and 0 oh for the Yankees. Yeah, both guys really pitching well, and Orioles have had some aggressive, uh, aggressive swings at the slider today. That was the pitch that Scope hit for the home run, and you know JJ the last time up hit a line drive on a slider. So there's another one. Today really doesn't seem I, I the game I watched the complete game he pitched to start before up in Seattle. He was throwing 94. Hasn't quite hit that today, but still used all his pitches very effectively. 1-0 delivery. And Hardy will take 2 and 0. JJ 0 for 2, ground ball, fly ball. Duo delivery, and that is going to be a strike on the outside corner. Couple of complete games this season. And a victory against the Mets, 4 0. Four hits, nine innings, no runs. Seattle, a couple of starts ago, complete game, two runs, six hits over nine. Yeah, he's so comfortable whether he's ahead or behind. And it's looking at the numbers, it really doesn't make a whole much of difference. He gets behind him two and oh, throws a good fastball to knees. And JJ's probably saying maybe he'll throw another one, throws him a slider, and now you have no idea what's coming. Here's a two two delivery on the way and a ground ball up the middle. That's right where they weren't playing him. Jeter was exactly. way over towards third base, and that's the hole that's there for him, and he got it there. And that's what happens when you throw, throw the perfect slider on a 2 2 count. And look at I mean, look at this big hole up the middle, and that's where he hits it. First of all, you got to cover the outside corner. JJ does a great job of that, and then nobody's playing there. So the Orioles get the leadoff man on for just the second time. Marquecas had a single in the first inning. And here's Manny Machado, hit number five. For the Orioles. Yeah, pitch count at 98, so still within hand. He's thrown over 100 pitches and almost, well, there have only been two games where he hasn't. First game, 97, and then he had an 88 pitch performance in the game that he lost, the only one he lost to Chicago, otherwise, over 100 and all of them. Machado has grounded out, flied out, even with a bag, Johnson at third. The Orioles play for a bunt here. Nope. That one towards the gap, and that's going to fall in. It'll go all the way to the wall. Takes the big hop. Here's Hardy at third. Bobby Dickerson will hold him up. Relay throw comes into Jeter. And Manny Machado with a big double puts two in scoring position with nobody out here in the seventh inning. Yeah, gets a fastball up and out over the plate. And this is vintage Manny Machado, 51 doubles last year. They, they, it looks like he's trying to go in. He misses the his location, and then Ellsbury really does a nice job as this ball will short hop the wall, go straight up in the air. If it stays down, Hardy probably would have scored, but it doesn't. What a chance for the Orioles to add to this one nothing lead against Tanaka. Scope with a home run, and he has flied out. Infield will be in at first and third, and back in the middle. Yeah, so again, if the ball is hit to either of the corners, and maybe cut off a run, don't want to give up two. Nobody out. Scope will take the pitch on the outside corner for a strike. And it really doesn't matter, apparently, for Tanaka if, if both of the home runs uh, by Jonathan have been on sliders and the first pitch is a slider. I guess he feels, and I always felt this way, if you execute the pitch versus not, you probably get the guy out. 0 oh, 1. Scope will take it down low. The Orioles are 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position today, and all three at bats came in the first inning when the Orioles had singles by Marquecas and Pierce with the first two on, and then Jones, Cruz, and Davis were all out. Yeah, he wants to get to two strikes, and Jonathan wants to get a ball that he can hit in the air. The two opposing forces here the pitcher and the hitter. One ball, one strike delivery on the way to Scope. And Scope, a ground ball runner coming home. Cheater will have to go to first. 
So he gets the RBI. RBI is Hardy scores, and the Orioles have a 2 0 lead. Well, it's nice when a 22 year old guy can homer to give you the lead and then give you another run to make it to double it up. But because he doesn't strike out, gets a good pitch to hit, hits it hard, and you get yourself an RBI, and the Orioles get their second run. And I'll tell you something hitting. pretty good base running right there by Manny Machado. You generally on that ball wouldn't go to third, but. Jeter was looking home, not to third. He wasn't even thinking about third. So Machado saw that and took off, and now he's in scoring position at third base with the infield in and only one away. And he's stealing, squeeze, and a beautiful drop. No, it goes foul. Yeah, he they, was off and going on the attempted squeeze by Caleb Joseph. Well, the good news is he fouled it off. And uh, again, when when you're squeezing, all you have to do is get it down on the ground. And it almost looked like that. I don't know if because it was a slider away, but it almost looked like it was a bunt for a base hit. So here is the squeeze. You start the runner, not a safety squeeze, where you wait to see if the bunt is bunted fairly. So again, it certainly could have got him out of the inning if he missed it, but he didn't. Caleb Joseph will come back by Showalter showing his belief in Joseph's ability to bunt, even though he didn't get that one down. The infield way in. Manny Machado can only get a very short secondary lead with Johnson so close to him at third base. Tanaka with the 0 1. Joseph will take that pitch outside. And a one ball, one strike count. And you do this every day when you take batting practice. And that is basically look for a ball you can get in the air. And the opposing force that I talked about is you got a pitcher that wants to either pop you up, maybe jam you, get you to swing through it. Joseph 1 and 1. And he lifts it in the air. We'll get the other run in as Ellsbury's way back, tagging up, scoring is Manny Machado. So he didn't get the squeeze bunt down, but he gets the RBI and gives the Orioles a 3 0 lead. So you get Hardy with a single. You get the 224 hitter Machado to double. You get the 222 hitter to get a sacrifice fly, or actually a ground ball to shortstop. And then uh, Caleb Joseph hitting under 150 gets the sacrifice fly. Great hitting by the bottom of the order. And the Orioles take a 3 0 lead with two runs across here in the seventh inning. Warren up in the bullpen for the Yankees. First bullpen action we've had for either team today. And with two down, here is Nick Marikakis. And Nick will lift one up in the air. Ellsbury. Is under it and puts it away, but one an effective inning as the Orioles get a couple of runs on two hits. Nobody left on RBI scope and Joseph, and it's seven inning stretch time. Orioles up three nothing. Transmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles.
Back here, a 3-0 lead for the Orioles. And to add to your entertainment on this Sunday afternoon, we proudly and honestly present Buck Bites. Buck Showalter. Buck Bites, Buck Bites is what he said today as he sat talking to the press with coffee in a Gatorade cup. Don't you hate to drink coffee out of a Gatorade cup? That doesn't make any sense, does it? You ever wonder why, Andy Rooney? When's the last time we were in here? Playoffs? Are we here for the last, Derek's last game too? A paranoid man would be, uh, 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 I'm not paranoid, I'm just overly alert. There's a fine line. Right? There's a difference between being paranoid and alert. By God, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, well, well. well what, uh, what do you say about that? I mean, that's nothing. every day. It's a, and just think. I mean, you think of Letterman. You think of uh, well, now Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel and uh, Johnny Carson. They all had writers. Yeah, he yeah. just does it off the Maybe top. Maybe it's Angela. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's his wife. I, it I don't be. know. Yeah. Maybe it was the hour and a half uh, cab ride when they took him to Shea Stadium to the Yankee <laughs> Stadium. Uh, he is funny. Well, he's also very, I mean, he is a very bright yes, gamer. But I he's mean, not he, paranoid. No. Well, no. No, he's, he's overly Keenly alert. alert. <laughs> overly <laughs> alert. <laughs> uh, he does not miss much. No. 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 Hey, oh, well, I mean, he got to the wrong park today. Other yeah. than that, but that wasn't his fault. No. Here is Carlos Beltran up. He has walked in. Grounded out. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Chris Tillman. It was funny talking about that today because what Buck said was, I'm doing a radio show in the cab. I'm talking on the phone doing a radio show, so I'm not looking where I'm going. And I get done with the radio show and I look up and I was like, where, do, where are we? <laughs> he said, we're headed out to Queens. <laughs> Mr. Collins. <laughs> but he didn't think he was Terry Collins, did he? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. Uh, they had to come back. Well, there was the best. Back to the game. <laughs> that was just probably the best curveball he's thrown. There's another one. So a little bit of room to work with, but you don't pitch any differently. I mean, you're still it's 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 one pitch at a time, one batter at a time. You're in the seventh inning. The pitch counts at 99. So 122, the high this year. Ball put up in the air towards the gap. Jones. Will come over in plenty of time. Beltron is retired and one away. As promised earlier in the game, our AT&T fan photo. Wow, that's okay, folks. There's nothing dangerous there. That's fireworks with a picture taken on Utah Street while the fireworks are going. Yeah, that, oh, that's wait, quite is, a shot. Is that Boog in the background at the barbecue? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not the way Boog cooks his bar. <laughs> no, no, I know it wasn't. Well, it, yeah, there is it's smoke barbecue beef and all that. Oh. 1-0 count. Kelly Johnson up. Hey, I'm not saying anything bad about Boog. No. Right? No. Absolutely not. As many games as he helped me win. As many games as he sends up those great sandwiches. He's as big as he is. You better be good. <laughs> and that reason, too. 2-0 <laughs> count. Johnson has struck out, lined out. 0 for 6 in the series. And does not get the call on that. And the count will go to 3 and 0. 103 pitches now thrown by Tillman, trying to work his way through the seventh inning of this ball game. He has been very effective. And he will surrender the walk here. That is the fourth walk he's given up, but he's moved him around in the game. Yeah, nobody, uh, well, excuse me, but uh, nobody up, but that'll get somebody at least stretching out the Oriole bullpen. Let's take a look at our Major League Notebook on this state of Major League history. Speaking of which, 1962, Boog Powell became the first ever to hit a home run over the hedge center field in Memorial Stadium, some 469 feet away. It came off Don Schwall of the Red Sox. And on this day, 45 year old White Sox Carlton Fist, last game, he broke the record held by Bob Boone at the time for games caught, the all time leader. Ironic that it would be his final day as a professional baseball player. 45 Pudge at the time. And of course Pudge in the Baseball Hall of Fame. One of the great catchers of all time. 24 years behind the plate. Very annoying. Pull hitter. <laughs> like to hit the fastball. Terrific player though. That'll be fouled away. Here's a look at Pudge who went into the Hall of Fame in 2000. 11 time All-Star. 300 
Seventy six career home runs which at the time was a record for a catcher bested by Mike Piazza later and uh, thirteen hundred and thirty RBI's twenty four years catching. That's those are some kind of knees. O2 count delivery on the way by Tillman that'll be put up in the air again to center Jones over. And he's out. Yeah, Nelson Cruz defers. The walk and then made some great pitches. Boy, I, this is one of the best games I've seen a pitch uh, since last year. And it's, you know, velocity's been better. You know, I mean, it started out with uh, getting behind Gardner. He looked like he tripled, came through the bag, and with a couple of glitches, as we look at Darren O'Day getting loose, he has been marvelous. And, and as the game has progressed, this is what the curveball is all about. He's been able to get it over in this city because it's a field pitch. Only four hits and no runs against him so far. That will be down the line by Ichiro. Ichiro in the nine spots come up with two singles in the ball game. Obviously stranded both times on. Yeah, I was asking Dave Wallace who came on along with Dom Cheney as the new pitching coaches, and I said uh, it looks like he just it, it looks like there's a maybe using the lower body. He said, "Well, we try to get his legs involved because he's so big and he's you know he's work out with Brady Anderson. He's much stronger, bigger than he was three years ago." But all of a sudden, the velocity going to back where we saw it at its best opening day, and then pretty much all of last year. Two down, run around to first base. Tillman has had a three hit ball game in eight innings in a loss against Toronto. He gave up only two runs, three hits in those eight innings. That's his career, that's his season low in hits three. He's given up four in this one. One ball, one strike delivery, each row to first, and underneath the glove of Davis. Nick Marquez will get it back in going to third base is Johnson. That one right under the Orioles first baseman's glove. And that could be costly. Or not. And again, you know, he's, he's holding him on a three nothing lead. And I'm not sure about that strategy, but that's where he's playing. And then, boy, you don't have a lot of time first to third. Ball just to eludes the glove. And it will be an error charge on Chris Davis at first base. Orioles committing their 39th. Yeah, so the job, yeah, the job, uh, Gary, as you know, is uh, if you're pitching, try to pick up Chris Davis. Doesn't mean you can do it all the time, but the Yankees certainly like the the fact that Gardner, who's been red hot. Loves to hit here, 333 hitter with four home runs at Yankee Stadium. Just gets to come to the plate. Potential tying run at the plate here in the bottom of the seventh inning, and Gardner will take it away. Gardner is struck out, walked, and doubled. Got thrown out at third in the first inning, trying to stretch the double to a triple on a play the Orioles challenged and had the safe call overturned. And still, perhaps the biggest play of this game. And remember, he got behind him, and all of a sudden he got to look. For what he was looking for, and that was a fastball, and smacked it into the corner. Delivery 1 0. Gardner is 5 for 17 lifetime against Chris Tillman, who's looking for one more big out. Yeah, if you look at the numbers, Gary, as we know, and you're the manager, you're already on your way out to the mound because almost everybody, and we talked about the fact that he's always struggled against the Yankees, ERA over six and a half runs a game. One ball, one strike count. And a great pitch and a swing and a miss. Kept it away and down. Well, how often do you get to see Brett Gardner or any Yankee hitter, and we saw Belcher and a number of these guys get out on their front foot because of the change of speed. That's about as good as you can throw a change up. This game has been everything but Chris Tillman that the season hasn't been. Best performance in the road. Always struggled here at Yankee Stadium. ERA nine and a half. He's given up nothing so far in this one. One ball, two strike count. Fans quieted. Pitch, ground ball, scope, over, force. What a job by Tillman. Getting the big outs when needed in this ball game. No runs on no hits. One error and two are left on base. Seven complete and a 3 0 O's lead.
he's only lost one game. He could be the losing pitcher in this one. Now again, a superlative uh, of effort. He gives up the solo home run to the, the scope. He gives up a couple of runs in the seventh, but certainly uh, didn't get hit around a whole lot. They they go to the bullpen. Adam Warren has just been terrific for him. A lot of people think that as a former starter coming through the minor leagues. Last year, out of the bullpen in 30, uh, what 34 games, a couple of starts. Four pitch pitcher, really has good stuff. Look at the numbers. He gets lefties out, right, righties a little bit more difficult. But maybe this would be a guy because of all their injuries. Pineda, and you got CC Sabathia. He's down. Uh, Nova having problems. He's out for the year. So again, uh, they figured maybe this is a guy that will eventually. But I think it's hard to do at this point. But come from the bullpen to start. Oriole family getting their picture taken here at Yankee Stadium. So Tillman is out pitch, did out pitch Tanaka in this ball game. And here is Steve Pierce. Pierce a single, one for three, couple of strikeouts, five game hit streak. Warren, the 26 year old, Tar Heel, had a great college career. North Carolina, 32 and four with a 3 4 ERA. His collegiate career. He graduated, got a degree in business administration. And his first pitch is taken down low for a ball. So Tanaka with a 1 8 6 ERA here at home and a 5 0 record at home leaves the ball game, giving up three in seven innings. 1 0 delivery on the way, Warren's pitch in there. Yeah, so there's the curveball, and uh, last six appearances over seven plus innings uh, have been scoreless. Couple of saves, you can throw those in there. Last outing was on the 19th against Toronto, where he got a save, working two thirds of an inning, and will catch the outside corner. Pierce questioning it, and the count goes to one and two. Well, they know he's a good fastball hitter, so if you have a, a choice or an alternative, and it looks like the curveball, he's got a slider too, change up to go with it. That's the fact that Nuno has not won in eight starts here at Yankee Stadium. The Orioles battered him around yesterday. This guy's got four pitches. Mm. Yeah. Almost mm. caught the jersey on that one. Well, Steve Pierce is one of those aggressive hitters. Close stance. That means the front foot is closer to the plate. And he doesn't give a lot. He hardly, I mean, doesn't do much with that front foot at all. Watch how quiet his front foot is. I mean, he just kind of uh, gets it set. And then again, a very, very strong man. That's going to be a base hit into right field. Pierce just can't be shut down. Another multi hit game. He's two for four. And how does he do it? I mean, he can hit home runs. He, you know, came into this game in this series four for nine. But just, I mean, you know, you throw him away. We talked about, you know, this is how you hit. We saw Machado do it, we saw a scope do it. Try to pull that ball, fly balls, ground balls, take it the other way, let the ball travel a little bit, cuts down the velocity, gives you a little more time to react to the ball away. Orioles have their seventh hit of the ball game. That'll bring up Adam Jones. Pierce had the, the home run and a single yesterday. Now has five consecutive multi hit games. Pitch is taken by Jones for a strike, and Pierce. As Buck Showalter said, you ride the hot hitter, and Pierce is that right now. So whether he's DHing or playing in left field, he's in the lineup. Jones, a base hit, one for three. He's gone four for 12 with a homer, two RBIs in this series. Warren's delivery, that's going to be a base hit. Hit the back of the mound, goes into center. Ellsbury will hold Pierce at second base, and the Orioles get the first two on here in the eighth inning. So he makes a good pitch to Pierce as far as location, then he hangs a curveball and Adam all over it. Toronto has lost today. Cincinnati beat him by a score of four to three. That is a final from Cincinnati. So the Orioles with a chance not only to gain now on the Yankees, but on Toronto. Dickey took the loss in that ball game as he goes six and six. Cueto got the win. He is now seven and five. Chapman got his 13th save for the Reds. Two on, nobody out, and the pitch is there for a strike to Cruz. So with the loss, Toronto has now lost 35 games. If the Yankees lose 
they'll have 35 losses. If the Orioles win, they will have 35 losses. All three of the teams at the top of the East. Toronto's got the advantage. That goes right over the bag. There's one. Oh, oh he threw it into the sand. He got tripped up. And a run is going to score. Pierce is out. Will they give him the extra base here? Jones saying, Do I have got to go back? No, I don't think so. He tags up at the plate now as that throw went about four rows back, and the umpires are looking at one another to decide what to do on this call. He got tripped on the slide, I believe, by Pierce coming into third base, and the umpires are going to meet. Well, is it any different than breaking up a double play at second base? I don't think so. No. You know, I've never seen, I mean, I've been around a long, long time, almost 50 years, and I'm not sure I've ever seen this. Now, did he slide to the bag, though? Doesn't really matter. I think he could have touched the bag with his right well, that's hand. That's what I yeah. mean. Yeah. Is he within distance yeah. of touching the bag? Well, and I guess uh, we could review this. Pierce, in any event, is out. Now the question is, will somebody else be out for an interference? Well, you take a look. Uh, he's coming in, touches the bag, and he looked to be, I mean, he could have done it. It wasn't like he, I mean, he is. He's not in a direct line. You'll probably see it great from this angle. Might be a little bit inside the bag, but he can touch it with his right hand, and he does. Yep. And that is the rule in sliding that so long as you're within I reach guess, of the bag. I, that, what I don't know, and I'll be the first to admit it, is I'm not sure if this is a challengeable call because it's certainly, and the umpires can do it after the seventh inning. Yeah, well, they're doing this on their own yeah. now, obviously. And Joe Girardi's off to the side, just kind of waiting to. Maybe about where they want to place the runner. Girardi's out there talking. He's saying, you, you see, he's pointing down to third base there. He's saying that Pierce was not sliding for the bag and that he was only going after Johnson, the third baseman. He's arguing interference. Now, watch his right hand. Now, he does come in, but could he touch the bag with his hand? Boy, from that angle, I don't know. Maybe not. You're right. From yeah. that angle, yeah. that may be interference. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. I just thought his front foot hit the front of the bag, but that wasn't the case at all. I think it's Steve Pierce uh, maybe interfering. You cannot slide directly at the fielder unless you're also going after the bag. And Adam Jones is coming back out of the dugout to go to third base. Well, that's a break for the Orioles right there. It, yeah. I mean, certainly could have been a double play. The runner's out because it's a force, and they could have given you the second out at first. Joe Girardi's arguing there should be two outs on this play. Yeah, yeah. oh, of course. And, and, and. Crew chief is Tom Hallion, who is the third base umpire, and that's who he's talking to. I think Joe's got a legitimate yeah. argument here. Well, hey, we got an argument. How about that? Well, it must not be a challengeable play. <laughs> We're back to original baseball. Yeah. Old time. Love it. Uh, Girardi will head off now. Buck Showalter is going to come out. He's probably going to ask, okay, are you sure he doesn't score? Right now the play will stand as a fielder's choice with Pierce out at third. Jones goes to third and Cruz Cruz is on second base remember. Well I, I guess what he's saying is that if he doesn't interfere and it looked like he did that. Uh, that Cruz is out at first so there would have been a runner at second and two outs. Or actually I, I guess we would have had a runner at third and two outs. Yes. Yeah. Well, Buck Showalter obviously trying to get the run in and, and counted and a, a throw into the stands from the infield is one base and from the outfield is two. I believe. Yep. The interference though call can result in the umpires taking out both the play at third and the force out and another runner either Jones or Cruz. Yeah, now they're probably with first base open, going to be forced to to, to to walk Chris Davis and let Warren pitch to J.J. Hardy, who's a much hotter hitter at this particular time. 
So it will stay with Jones moving up to third base and Cruz going to second on the fielder's choice, which actually is pretty good news for the Orioles. Puts two in scoring position with one out. Uh, what could have been a play with two outs and a runner either at first or third. Orioles up 3 nothing. The intentional pass will be surrendered here to Davis by Warren to load the bases. It's only the second walk the Orioles have picked up. Tanaka walked only one. That was Marcakis in the fifth. The intentional pass to Davis will give Hardy the chance while the Yankees look for the ground ball double play. Yeah, Warren certainly uh, doing it. You, know, you work on that in spring training, but I, I hated intentional walks because there was a guy going on. But the other thing is, you don't do it very often. You know, just come up, get yourself set, and then he's firing it to McCann. So Davis is on, and JJ Hardy coming up. Hardy's got a two for four against Warren in his career. JJ in this ball game picked up a base hit leading off the seventh. Would be one of the two to score. He and Manny Machado in the RBIs by Scope and Joseph. The infield will play back in the middle for two in at first and third with a possible force out at the plate. And the pitch is there for a strike. Hardy with the bases loaded has had an 0 for 3 this year. Career three grand slams. And he's just thinking uh, put a good swing on it. Until two strikes, try to get something you can get up into the air. Change up. So they're getting to see all four of his pitches here in the eighth. One ball, one strike out from Warren, who came on in relief of Tanaka in this eighth inning. One one delivery on the way, and he did get one. That's in the gap, and it's going to fall in. That may clear the bases as Jones scores, Cruz scores, Davis is coming. Here's the relay throw to the plate. Off the mark. All three are in. Going to third base. Throw by Warren is there. No, he's safe. The throw looked like it got there ahead of Hardy, but he's called safe at third, and the Orioles at three and take a 6 nothing lead. Yeah, a nice little series home run yesterday. A high breaking ball. They're playing shallow, which is probably where you should play, but it backfires. Jada doesn't really drive the ball to right, but this year more balls than normal. There's the overthrow, swipe tag. Davis is safe. That's your third run, and then there's the throw, and it doesn't look like it's on time. And there is a Adam Warren with the throw, but he doesn't tag him. It gets him up on the knee. Great nice slide. slide, yeah. To the outfield side. Wow. So it, it'll be credited as a double for Hardy. He will get three RBIs. And a throwing error is going to be charged on Solarte on his throw to the plate. But still going to give Hardy the three RBIs. The throwing error allows the runner to go from second to third. Oh, what a big hit for J.J. Hardy in the intentional pass to Davis backfires on the Yankees. Now the infield in, still only one away. The Orioles six runs on nine hits in the ball game. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's the, probably the right thing to do, even though Hardy's been hotter than Davis. Only if Warren makes his pitches, and he didn't. Got a ball up. 1-0 delivery on the way. That will be taken for a ball. Machado's got a double, one for three, and a run scored. For J.J. Hardy, add the three RBIs. He's had himself a uh, 19 now on the year and he's got four of them here in this series against New York swing and a miss on a good pitch down two and one uh, McFarlane and O'Day for the Orioles and the benefactor of all of this is Chris Tillman he will be coming he's out of the ball game not officially yet but he'll be coming out having surrendered no runs and four hits. Two ball, one strike count. And couldn't hold up on it. Home plate umpire calling on the swing on that one. Two and two. So that call at third base on the potential interference 
important in setting up that inning. Well, it's two runs as, as they stand. Yeah. Two ball, two strikeout. And a chopper, and that's going to go into left field for a base hit. That'll add another run as Hardy will score for the Orioles. Four runs in in the inning and a 7 nothing lead for the O's. Just enough for the hard ground to get over Johnson's head. No, this is what happens when you trail. You got to play your infield in. High chopper, routine ground ball if you're playing normal position, but you can't because you were down 6 nothing. Now make it 7. So big, big, huge, huge inning. Four run inning here in the eighth. Seven runs on ten hits in the ball game for the Orioles. And still with one away, Jonathan Scope, a homer, two RBI ball game. Fouls it back. That is home run off Tanaka in the second, the run that stood up until this inning, the seventh. The Orioles got two, four more here in the eighth. And the Orioles now just trying to pad this lead in the eighth inning. Scope got the other RBI on a ground ball out. And a swing and a miss on Warren's delivery. 0 and 2. The Orioles trying to hand Tanaka just his second loss of the year. O2 and one out. And a chopper to third again. Johnson's got this one. One. And the relay is there in time from Salarte at second. But the Orioles come up with a big four run eighth inning. The hit by Hardy that cleared the bases, the big one. And they lead it 7 0. to get his sixth win having pitched his perhaps best ball game of the year and certainly the best ball game that he's pitched on the road this year just effective for most of the game with a one nothing lead Tillman got the big outs when he needed them. Yeah, I got the memo today that he better pitch well with Tanaka great defense behind him uh, including himself. There are your chief inside the numbers, so he goes seven innings, threw the ball about as well as I've seen him. You now maybe a little bit wild, but great velocity. Curveball came around, and now he will give the ball to uh, T.J. McFarland, who came in. Uh, as you look, and our pitching change, our Jimmy Lou pitching change. The Orioles can check this pitching change off their to-do list. Time for you to check oil change off yours. Come into Jimmy Lou and help keep your vehicle running along. And uh, T.J. wants to keep uh, the Oriole charge. With a seven nothing lead here in the eighth inning pitched on Friday night a couple of innings a lot of ground balls that's what he does. Again, the numbers coming down still more hits than innings pitch. I kind of figure it's going to be about a, a hit per inning because of the fact he makes he really pitches the contact not that he can't strike people out. 
but his whole intention is make his pitchers and make them put the ball in play. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. And McFarland working to Jeter, Ellsbury, and to Sheridu. And the pitch will be taken. 0 for 3 in the ball game, 1 for 11 in the series for Derek Jeter. Jeter 0 for 2 against McFarland. Jonathan Scope moves over towards first in his second base position. It'll go to short on the ground. Hardy. Follow every Orioles game all season long with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. At bat brings you baseball wherever you are. Look in since the replays, MLB TV game of the day, and much more. You can find it MLB.com at bat on the App Store. Or go to Orioles.com. With one away here in the eighth, Ellsbury coming up. He has walked double, flied out to left on a Tough play made in left field, Cruz. And the pitch will be taken. Orioles, they can win this. We'll have a four and two road trip and the same record, four and two against the Yankees. The Orioles have done the Yeoman's work here in New York. Trying about, to take two out of three. How about that note that uh, we got today that the last time the Orioles have won a season series against the Yankees all the way back when they went wire to wire in 1997. Yankees have had the season series wins ever since then. Yeah, last year it was a little bit closer. You know, they won 10, the Orioles won 9. A lot of games to be played between these two teams. Yep. See the lead. After today, 13 left. Four of them here. Jonathan Scope in the outfield grass will make the play, and Ellsbury's retired, and there are two down yeah. off McFarland's work. Yeah, nice little pitch, a couple of grounders, good slider. That's what he went to Triple A for. Work on the fact that maybe it really hasn't manifested itself, but uh, how are you going to be able to get lefties out? You've got to be able to sharpen up that breaking ball. That's what he worked on. Here is Teixeira, two down and nobody on. Teixeira's got an 0 for 3. Maybe the last chance to continue his hit streak, which stands at 10 at the moment. McFarland's delivery to him, and it will miss for a ball. Left handers 294 against McFarland, right handers 315. With the numbers coming down. 1 0 delivery and to share it takes for a strike. And probably a little bit low. He doesn't even look back. Scoreboard focus. He knows he's been red hot. He wants to continue that hitting streak. Doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. Still get on base. Have a quality at bat. Swing and a miss. Didn't get a good swing in the off speed pitch. Yeah, nice changeup. Yankees came into this in the run differential department a minus 22. So they're a minus 29. The Orioles came in a plus one. So a plus eight in that run differential category. One two delivery and that I think hit him on the foot or the ankle. And he will make his way towards first with the manager on his way out with the trainer. Yeah, brace level slider. Got the front foot. Yeah, it's hard to get that foot up when watch him put it down. So he's trying to put it down because he's hitting against it and then right in the side of that left foot. He slams the helmet down and is leaving. He thinks he's hurt. He thinks it's more than just being hit. Yeah, well, he hurt the hamstring up in, uh, I think, Boston early on or, or the groin. Had the, the surgery on the right wrist last year. Missed a little bit of time, but that seems to be healthy. One of those freak injuries. Looks like they caught him right on the toe, didn't it? Well, somewhere around there, the ball of the foot or the outside, maybe one of the, the little toe. Yeah. Wow. So Ryan will come on to run. Brendan Ryan for Teixeira at first base. And with two down, Ryan McCann will hit. 
Davis will play behind the runner at first and the Orioles will put the shift on against the Yankee catcher runner will go filed off for a strike. Well the Orioles have taken the steam out of this one to their credit in that big four run four hit eighth inning. A lot of folks have departed another sellout here forty seven thousand four hundred ninety three. Now you look at the scoreboard seven nothing but this was one nothing Orioles until the sixth. This is Hardy. <laughs> There's a play he doesn't make very often. He cuts off the ball in front of the second baseman. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. Orioles up 7 0. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com and by your Baltimore BMW Center. Here in New York, the Orioles with a 7 0 lead on this beautiful Sunday afternoon along the East River. Here's David Huff. Yeah, David, a high ERA, but I really threw the ball well. He was one of the reasons that uh, when the Orioles took the 3 1 uh, lead the other night, they didn't get any more runs. And then uh, Beltran would hit the three run home run off Zach Ritten. They'd come back and win in the walk off here. So he threw a little bit harder than I remember when he was a starting pitcher. The numbers, especially against right handers, but the other night, 93, pretty good breaking ball because of all the injuries. Certainly, uh, you know, Boone Logan was with the Yankees last year. Matt Thornton kind of took his place. So another lefty for Joe Girardi at the Yankee bullpen. The changes with. Teixeira out. Johnson will move from third to first base. Brendan Ryan will stay in to play at second, and Solarte, who was at second, will move over to third base. So the infield: Solarte, Jeter, Ryan, and Johnson now third to first. Orioles bat as we go to the ninth. Seven nothing out hitting the Yankees ten to four. Warren worked an inning, gave up four runs, four hits, an intentional pass, and no strikeouts. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Orioles sent seven to the plate in that eighth inning. Caleb Joseph, a sack fly RBI, 0 for 2 at the plate. Left hander's pitch will be fouled off. So another yeoman job behind the plate for Caleb. Boy, you wish you had a time machine and you could go back to the very first Yankee batter and see what the effect would have been. If Gardner had been safe at third on that play, the way Tillman pitched, maybe nothing, but that well, was the first battery face. Well, how about yesterday? You know, four straight balls for Gardner. Joseph comes up. Uh, you know, Cheater hitting second. Ball, ball five, fifth in a row. He tries to steal. Caleb Joseph throws him out, and yep. Norris gets into the fifth inning before the the groin tightens up, and the Orioles go on to win that game. Now they, yeah, they, you know, they hit four home runs, but. Boy, momentum in this ballpark. Yeah. It would sold out almost every game, especially the, over this weekend. Weather fabulous. The Yankees had played well. They were 8 and 2 going into yesterday. 
2 2 delivery away. Well, Bud, talking with him after the ball game last night, he told us. He's, I asked him about that play, and he said, said that just settled things down. He said, I was able to think about pitching again, think about the hitter, and that just wiped the clean slate for me to start over again on the second batter. 3 2 delivery on the way, and he got that one in the air to left field. Caleb Joseph, and goodbye, home run. And the Orioles catcher puts one up, and Bud Norris. The Orioles pitcher celebrates it. That is number one. His first major league home run, and it comes at Yankee Stadium. Will they ice him? There. Anybody going to talk to him? They're all looking the other way, and he's going to go down. <laughs> he's going down the ramp. Well, he's going down <laughs> to get the equipment. <laughs> He knows what his it. job is. Look at Cruz <laughs> laughing. Well, they didn't, and he's still down there. He's, he's not going to come back up. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> and our Maryland lottery contestant, Dale Timms, gets another $500. That's a great response. He's got all the Orioles looking for him now. There he comes. <laughs> his first major league home run, and they got the wall back from the stands. And Gardner out in left field threw it back in so he can get it. Good for Caleb Joseph. Oh, yeah. That's going to go into right field for a base hit. So Marquecas delivers a single, and the Orioles, who are up 8 nothing in the game. Now he gets on this fastball in the you know, middle 90s, you know, last year. And Bud Norris, he, they all know. I mean, it's kind of like what they, when JJ hit his home run and then the silent treatment. <laughs> That's the best response. There's the baseball, his first home run. Oriel players were asking for it, and they got it. Well, Caleb is from a small town, Franklin, Tennessee, and he said, yeah, you know, I saw he and his wife on uh, on Thursday on the off day, and and then by Friday he said, boy, there's a lot of noise in this town. I'm, I'm from a small city. He said, I'm not used to this. Very frenetic. I don't know if you use that word, but that's kind of where he was going with it. It is. <laughs> yes, indeed. He will not mind New York though after that. Well coming on Madison Avenue if, if today to the ballpark if every day was like Sunday morning. Oh yeah. Well if every day was summer and people were still in the Hamptons. Well that too. Sundays are great in yeah. New York. <laughs> I mean it you hardly ever stop. Uh, take a look tonight at about seven o'clock. They're all coming <laughs> They're the other all coming way. back. <laughs> one ball one strike count. Pierce another multi hit game. He's had two singles. Two for four. In the ball game is career first five consecutive multi hit game stretch. The Orioles now with eight runs on 12 hits in this ball game. And Pierce with a runner at first base will take it away. It's why you play these games, the baseball gods, if you had asked people to score in the ninth inning, would be 8 0 Orioles in this ball game, you would have been laughed off Broadway. And and that's why you play them. And don't think all over baseball that people are not looking at the scoreboard because that's what I don't care what people say. If you're a, a player, fan, and fan, you got to be a fan of the game. I mean, you got to pay attention to what's going on as Pierce will walk. And you're looking around and then you're going to yourself, you're saying, well, hey, eight to nothing. Did Zaka get hurt? Yeah. What happened? I mean, it was, but you know, again, this is going into the seventh inning is a one nothing game. Orioles get two, and then the Orioles off a of Warren add four. And Rothschild out to have a word with Huff here in the ninth as the Orioles now have two on and nobody out and Jones coming up. Well, take, take us the single and the walk to Pierce. And the point might be very simple. Hey, I don't care what the scoreboard is. I mean, this is what those games where if you're a reliever and especially if you're David Huff and you know, even look, Matt Thornton's probably going to be your number one left hander is and you saw the high ERA when he came in. This is when you can't lose focus. You, you, know, you don't want to get anybody else up. You don't want to embarrass. Them. And if you're like Russia, you don't want the team ERA going up. Yeah. And they're off to play Toronto. The Yankees yeah. uh, have a set coming up against Toronto starting tomorrow. Adam Jones on a big cut with two on and nobody out. A victory by the Orioles will tie them with the Yankees for second. Both teams will be a game and a half behind Toronto. Toronto lost today to the Reds, as we said. By a score of four to three. The Yankees go to Toronto to start the set tomorrow night with the Chase Whitley and Marcus Stroman, the scheduled starters. 
Yeah, Whitley, one of those young kids. Uh, they've won. He's three and zero, but they've won what the last five games he's started. Certainly not a marquee name. And then, of course, they'll go to Toronto. Then the Red Sox come here, and then Tampa Bay comes in. Larry Kekas and Pierce off second and first, and Jones will swing through it. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. There is Caleb Jofus, Joseph with his major league first home run. Yeah, I was joking with him today. I said, you know, it's all right to get some hits. And he really, I mean, not only the home run, I, to me, one of the great at bats he had is a sacrifice fly. Because you know that Tanaka, it's 2 0 at the time, runner at third. He's trying to get him out with only one out, and he's able to get a ball and hit it to deep center field. Actually, put a good swing on it. Here's the 1 2 delivery on the way, and that'll go the other way down the line, and it will be a foul ball. Yeah, and Joseph did that at a time where he could have really been down on himself because the pitch, he tried to squeeze yep. and bring the runner in, Manny Machado, from third base, and he bunted it foul and then came back to get the sack fly. There's Manny on his left. Well, I was you know, I was telling him today, and of course, you know, I mentioned it earlier. But Joel Walter uh, wears number 26 because that's what Johnny Oates, uh, a former catcher, caught here. I was 10 and 0 with him one time, and if you have a relationship, and I think Caleb has been able to do that with his pitching staff, you know, Hundley, the, yeah, Hundley as the Jones will strike out. Hundley, you know, the more experienced, but Caleb's been here since spring training, and I think it became pretty evident for everybody with Matt Weider's eligible uh, elbow injury that he probably wasn't going to come back. And as it turns out, he's had the Tommy John surgery. So he's done a nice job of establishing the rapport. He's done a great job for a guy that was supposed to be an offensive guy, not a defensive guy, of learning how to catch, going with a game plan, working with John Russell, the bench coach, former catcher. And if you don't have a good catcher, you can't have a good team. And he's really helped this ball club. Pitch will be taken for a strike by Cruz. Only one down, two on. Cruz 0 for 4. He has scored a run. Two for 11 in this series with a home run and a couple of RBIs. Nelson starting the day tied for home runs in the league with 23. And Canacion to Toronto and he are tied. And Canacion two ahead in RBIs starting the day 62 to 60. Left hander Huff. One ball one strike count. Big home run cut right there. Yeah, backup slider, and he swings right through it. Cruz with the RBIs, he's picked up now 60 through 72 games. Only three other players in Orioles history have had that many RBIs in that number of games Goose Goslin, Moose Salters, and Tegel Mahata. Goose Goslin, 62 and uh, 66 for Salters. To how to hit 69. Two ball, two strike count. This game right now is meandering its way to a finish. <laughs> and that'll be popped up second base, maybe longer. And it is, and Ichiro makes a nice play. Ryan started back, thought he had a play on it. The ball kept going, and he taps the glove of Ichiro for coming in and helping out. Cruz retired, two down. Runners stay first and second. Uh, so I don't know what Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach of the Yankees, said, but it's working. Get some people out. Here's Chris Davis. Davis got the intentional pass his last time up that loaded the bases and Hardy made the Yankees pay with a double and three RBIs. Davis an 0 for 3 2 for 13 in the series. And the left handers pitch to him will be up high for a ball. 1 0 count White Sox at home tomorrow. Oriole Park Camden Yards the site way in Chen Chris Sale. 6:30 O's extra. Seven o'clock for the ball game. First of three. Three night games against the White Sox. 1-0 delivery. Davis on the cut will go to first base. Handled there by Johnson. He'll take it to the bag. To so the Orioles, no runs. Uh, pick up a run, leaving a couple off. And Caleb Johnson, one to remember, his major league first home run. Eight nothing. Orioles. Thank you, Bud Norris.
three Machado one two for scope two for Joseph. Yeah, you look at the batting averages uh, coming in not not of Hardy but you know the last three hitters from Machado to the scope to to, uh, to Joseph you go geez I just pencil those guys I'm going to get out well that's yeah. not the way it turned out and of course Tillman after I mean he struggled a little bit but is this was uh, 2013 Chris Tillman when he won 16 games he's been that was that good this afternoon. So the Yankees bat here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Carlos Beltran leading it off 0 for 2 and a walk in the game. McFarland looking to finish it off. Tillman's going to be 6 and 4. Tanaka 11 and 2. And the Orioles will improve to 39 and 35. That'll be the same mark for the Yankees. They will gain a game on both the Yankees and Toronto. Question is can the Yankees get rid of that goose egg on the board? The Yankees have not scored in since the fourth inning yesterday. And if the shutout continues, this will be their largest shutout loss this year. Ball down the line, curving, and it is foul in the corner. They'd been shut out by the Cardinals, 6 0. Orioles have the 8 0 lead. Yankees have been shut out only three ta two, two times rather this year. Orioles have six shutouts to their credit. Well, the other thing is uh, the Orioles, if they win this afternoon, will have won four out of six games on this road trip and uh, didn't want to lose the first one in Tampa Bay, but they did win the next two. The three to one lead on Friday night, written about as good as anybody coming out of the pen. One run in his last 21 appearances. And Three runs in 37 innings the entire year gave up four runs and they lost that game on the Beltron home run. Down to third and foul. So the ability to come back and win series is pretty much what it is. Orioles, as far as series are concerned, uh, if they hang on and get this one, they will be 10, 8, and 6 in series. 10 wins, 8 losses, 6 ties. And a big two out of three here in New York. McFarland's delivery just just enough to foul it back. Well, a couple of lefties that will pitch at least the two initial starters, Sale and Quintana, for the White Sox. But a couple of guys just got to get going. And Chris Davis, you certainly want him to start hitting a little bit better. Same with Machado. Well, the Orioles getting the victory yesterday beat another left-handed starter, Nuno. So they have evened up their mark to 10 and 10 against lefties and continue to improve their batting average overall against left handers. Well Chris Sale is the. Uh, Leighton Kershaw of the of the American League. Mm -hmm. So was Tanaka. Well you're right. Well no I, yeah. you know, I, I agree. I mean. Three ball two strike delivery on the way and another one tap foul. But at the end of the day I, you know we were talking about in the locker room the other day and. The, the late Jim Elliott, who used to write for the Baltimore Sun, he said, "At the end of the day, all you have to do, and it's a big all you have to do, got to be better than the starter you're pitching against." And that's what Tillman was able to do today. Orioles hitters did a terrific job, especially in the late innings. Three ball, two strike delivery again by McFarland, and again it's going to be fought off. So Beltron working him hard here. Well, you don't need to trick him with a eight to nothing lead, so you're going to go to what you do best, and that's the sinker. Be the 11th pitch of this at bat. Johnson and Salarte do up here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Tags that one left field and near the warning track. Will be hauled in. Cruz goes back to get it. Beltran retired. One away in the ninth. The Yankees have left eight. On base in this ball game, only three in scoring position today. Tillman getting big outs as needed. Soriano coming on as the pinch hitter. Alfonso Soriano, the infield will shift around, playing him to pull. Soriano with a three for seven as a pinch hitter. Six home runs overall, 23 runs batted in. Yeah, this will be a tune up for Tuesday night when uh, Mark Burley pitches uh, for the, the Blue Jays.
McFarland's 0 1 pitch to him will be grounded to short where everybody had gathered. Hardy. <laughs> Great description. And a little powwow out of short for the pull hitter. Not much room to put a ball through and everybody's over no. there on the left side. <laughs> and there are two down. So the Orioles one out away from getting the victory. Well, the amazing thing is that on the ground, when that the Wall Street Journal article was 71% of balls hit on the ground are pulled. That's the reason for the shift. The shifts. Yep. And the balls hit in the air just the other way. They tend to be straight away on most hitters. Two down, pitch in there for a strike. Salarte and 0 for 3 in the ball game. He's now gone 0 for his last 27. Well, I can tell you, T.J. McFarlane is making uh, Buck Showalter happy. You know, with lefty coming in and getting both righties and lefties out, and what well, sure saves your bullpen. You know, Dave was up earlier. When the game gets slanted towards your side. You bring a young pitcher who was starting in the minor league level this year. Rule five guy last year had to keep him all year, so he's getting you uh, meaningful outs. Get the game over with. 0-2 delivery on the way. Tillman with a no runs four hits over seven. He had four walks couple of strikeouts. McFarlane has hit a batter. And that's the only base runner against him in the. Inning in two thirds he's worked so far. One ball two strike delivery and a swing and a miss and the Orioles have picked up the win. McFarlane with the two innings. Gets it done with no hits, a strikeout, no walks, and the Orioles have picked up their seventh overall shutout, shutting out the Yankees, who have been shut out just three times. And a great performance here by the Orioles as they come away with an 8 0 win. Three hours and three minutes, the magic number for the Orioles. The O's now return home as they'll have a homestand starting tomorrow night with the White Sox way in Chen on the mound against Chris Sale. Our coverage on Mass on 630 O's Expert presented by 